roll call. So um, calling the, the meeting of uh, March 24th of the Solid Waste Regional Board of Davidson County um, to order. Um, with that, I would ask for a roll call from Sharon. Yes, uh, Demita Beck-Taylor. Here. Robert Deal. Here. Here. Dale Grimes. I'm here. Jennifer Hackett. Here. Midori Lockett. Here. Jeff McCormick. Here. Beth Reardon. Here. Jason Repture. Here. John Sherman. Here. Lisa Smith. Michael Here. Sullivan. Oh, Lisa, was that you? Yes, that's me. Okay, and Michael Sullivan. Mm. All right, I believe Michael Sullivan is not with us. Chair, we have a quorum. Very good. Thank you, Sharon. Um, and uh, the, the first order of business, because we are on, uh, we're doing this through, through the internet and computer system, we need to... Um, I'm, we, we need to pass a motion of essential business of Metro government. So uh, board members, I'm going to read this. And then um, once we do that, we'll go into the welcome and talk about the agenda. So here's the, here's the motion that I will need someone to repeat. I will need to someone to uh, both um, offer it as a, as a, when it, once I get it read. That's as follows. Pursuant to Governor Lee's executive order number 78 regarding electronic meetings, I make a motion that the Davidson County Solid Waste Region Board's meeting agenda constitutes essential business of the metropolitan government and that meeting electronically is necessary to protect the health, safety, and welfare of Tennesseans in light of the COVID-19 outbreak. I need a motion from one of the board members to, so to approve. Who, who, who made the motion? Please say your name so we can get it quickly. McCormick. McCormick uh, made the motion. I, I need a second. 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 Sorry, Smith. who made the second? Smith. All right, thank you. We're good to go. Um, so uh, welcome to the to our meeting today. Um, we, it's we a very cool agenda. Sorry, we have to go do a roll call of everyone real quick. Oh, oh, sorry. We need to do the roll call. Sharon, thank you. I was yes. anxious. So uh, um, let's do a roll call. Um, motion made, seconded, uh, uh, and we, we cannot do anything by voice vote. We have to do everything by roll call over the over the, the airwaves. So Sharon, please go through the list. It's going to slow us down a bit, I think, but let's yes. do it. Demita Beck-Taylor. Aye. Robert Deal. Aye. Dale Grimes. Dale Grimes. Okay, Jennifer Hackett. Sorry, uh, I, I I was muted. I apologize. Oh, got you. Jennifer Hackett. Aye. Midori Lockett. Aye. Beth Reardon. Here. Jason Repture. Aye. John Sherman. Aye. And Michael Sullivan is not here. All right, we're good. Very good. Thank you, Sharon, um, for reminding me of that. And so the motion carries and we, we have essential business we're taking care of. Welcome. Um, we have, as I said before, we Mr. have a Chair, very packed agenda. Can I, pardon me for being so rude. Representative Vincent Dixie is trying to get in and cannot get in. He asked me if I would ask uh, Ms. Smith, Sharon right. Smith, because she sent in my email. Okay. okay. We're signing Thank you, Senator. Um, right, thank Senator, that. we're going to... We're going to try and send it again. Can we send the invitation again to Representative Dixie? His legislative email. I have his legislative email. Thank you. Pardon me for being so rude. No, thank you for letting us know. That's fine, and we'll uh, we can follow. Up. This is we're in this electronic world, so it's all a little funky. Um, so the agenda for today, uh, we have to approve the minutes of the last meeting, which will be pretty quick. Um, the uh, we have uh, the annual progress report. 
we have the annual progress report to uh, to uh, that Sharon will present to us, and we can uh, to uh, review. Uh, that is going to require public comment. Uh, that's off we're going to offer public comment on, on that as well. I'm going to give a quick update on the sustainable advisory board of the, um, the committee of the mayors. And uh, and then I think the, the obviously the biggest thing on the agenda today, I think probably my most of you are here in the audience, is that there is an application for expansion of the C and D landfill by Southern Services. Um, that and we will go through the, the specifics of that at that time. But I just want you all to know that we have there's going to be two public comment periods here. One just for the annual plan. Um, and I'm assuming most folks who uh, are here are, are wanting to listen and perhaps provide public comment on the landfill application. So just know that we're going to have two different two different public comment periods. Um, with that, uh, I'll start the meeting. Um, and the, uh, the the first one is to uh, uh, entertain a motion to approve the minutes from the October 14th, 2020 meeting. Uh, move to approve. That was was that Robert Deal that moved? Yes. This is um, Jason. I'll I'll second. And uh, so, uh, uh, board members, would you please identify your name oh. before you move or second, so uh, we can get it down on the record easier? So, uh, was it uh, Dale Grimes? Did you second? No, that was not me. I, I wasn't there, so I don't feel like it's appropriate for no, me. No, no, that's it, right. So was that Jeff McCormick? Yes. Okay. So deal, uh, deal offered the motion, McCormick seconded. Uh, all in favor? Sharon? All right. We have Demita Beck-Taylor. Aye. Dale Grimes? Aye. Jennifer Hackett? Aye. Midori Lockett? Aye. Jeff McCormick? Aye. Uh, Beth Reardon? Aye. Don Sherman? Aye. Lisa Sullivan? Smith? Lisa. I'm sorry, Lisa Smith. I'm, I joined your name with Michael Sullivan. So sorry to, to everyone. Sharon. <laughs> Sharon Smith. Uh, yeah, I, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Sharon Smith is here and Michael uh -huh. Sullivan is trying to get in. I think he's in it. needs to be, um, he's not in as a uh, host. Okay. All right, so we're good on that. Very good. So um, motion carries on approval of the minutes. We're now going to turn to the annual progress report. And um, just to let everybody know what this is, every year, um, the, 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 the pretty much public work, Sharon's shop um, prepares, and we need to either approve or disapprove of an annual report on progress uh, against the plan. And uh, this, is, this, this report is an official report that gets submitted to the state. Um, and it's due by the end of March every year. So uh, for those of you who are new to the board, this is this is the process. Um, uh, and uh, this year, and so Sharon, how we go through this is Sharon will give some, we'll give an overall presentation. The board will have the opportunity to ask her any questions. Then we'll open it up for any public comment that may be just on the plan. Again, not on the not on the not on the Southern Services application yet. Um, and then the board will need to um, take, uh, we'll have to take a couple different actions um, about that. And we'll get to that at that point. So with that, Sharon, would you like to um, give us an overview? And I assume you're gonna pop something up on the, on the screen here for us. Yes, can you see the, um, can you see the agenda? Yes, yes ma'am. All right, so I'm going to, um, keeping in mind that uh, we have, you know, very important things to talk about. I'm going to go through the annual progress report very quickly. Fortunately, we were able to get the bulk of it completed and uh, circulated to the board members and out on the Solid Race Region Board's website. Uh, the, uh, the, the only changes from what you all received earlier were some last minute adjustments. Uh, TDEC does some um, collection of data that they send over and some that they enter themselves and that is what took a little bit longer. So very quickly, uh, the annual progress report uh, was part of the 1991 Solid Waste Management Act that created solid waste regions um, and uh, required them to create 10-year plans to divert waste from landfills. 
Those 10 year plans are updated annually in the, in the annual progress report. So today we will be approving the report and also um, sort of technically updating our um, solid, our 10 year plan or our solid waste management plan, even though there aren't any changes. And um, our solid waste management plan is Nashville's long-term zero waste plan that was adopted by the solid waste board in December of 19, uh, 19, 2019, pardon me. Uh, I wanna very quickly go through some exciting, uh, exciting successes we had over the last year. Uh, some of you who had trash collection from Metro might have experienced some delays during COVID because so many more people were working from home. We saw a shift of commercial trash going kind of more into the Metro residential. So we took our four day a week routes and we spread them out over five days, which has really done a better job of balancing trash and recycling collection. The other good thing about doing this, the way we set it up is when we get funding to go to every other week curbside recycling, we will not have to make any routing changes other than your recycling will be picked up every other week. And so that's something we're still hoping to work towards in the near future. As part of that, we were able to mail out uh, uh, recycling information to all of our uh, trash and recycling customers, which was a great opportunity with the changes that you all are familiar with, with, with uh, China and many Southeast Asian countries no longer accepting material from the United States and other countries. Uh, allowed them the opportunity, uh, allowed us the opportunity to communicate a bit more on um, what you can and cannot put in your cart. And most recently, and also most excitedly, we launched a waste and recycling app. And I'm going to stop sharing my screen very uh, quickly here. And um, Jen, let me know if you're going to be able to share your screen or if I need to give you. You permission. need to give me permission to share my screen. All right, Jen, I'm going to scroll up. I'm going to flaunt. There you are. Oh, just for everybody to know that Jen is also a public works employee and works with Sharon. So for those who um, may not know that. And I'll, as she's uh, working to get me the opportunity to share my screen, I'll just go ahead and start okay, chatting sure. about um, our waste and recycling app. It was launched on mon last Monday, and it's available both online at recycle.nashville.gov, as well as you can download it to your mobile devices. So your iOS devices, as well as Android devices. And it's oh, just did. really <laughs> fabulous. Oop. Yeah, Jen, yeah. <laughs> really fabulous streamlined information about our curbside collection program but then also as well what you can and cannot recycle excellent here we go we are sharing can everyone see my screen yes awesome okay so i'm just going to show you this really quick so like i said there's two main features of the app this is what it looks like on our website you've got the schedule information for curbside customers so you just start typing in your address and you can pull up all of your personalized information it's really handy it gives you all kinds of custom of information that we can customize and gives you a nice calendar you can mm -hmm. sign up for reminders you can print out a calendar that is personalized and custom to your address um, and get all kinds of really great information and we can provide alerts as well through that system. Um, most excitedly um, in terms of this program is the Waste Wizard. So this allows you to search different items and find out how to dispose of them properly. So all of our recycling, you can see it gets curbside recycling information, but this is also including drop-off information as well. So this gives you all of these different, um, all the information about how to use those different programs, but it also includes information about our, um, about over 200 different um, items and growing, not just recycling, but we're really hoping that this will help folks better understand what they can and cannot recycle and reduce our contamination rates. There's a lot of other robust, robust features as part of um, the Waste Wizard and part of the um, app that we are really looking forward to being able to use and provide more education through uh, this program. But it's, um, uh, I hope you all download it. And if you have any questions about it, please feel free to shoot me an email. Wonderful, thank you, Jen. Excellent, thank you, Jen. All right, I'm going to um, take back the screen.
All right, and now you should be able to see again the presentation. Um, I have taken the um, waste and recycling um, numbers and kind of made them a little smaller than what we usually go through, but you can see the details in the actual report. You can see from 2019 to 2020, while our municipal solid waste dropped some, the C&D landfill waste increased significantly, and that was largely because of the tornado, as everybody can imagine. Um, our public recycling tons also increased some, and some of that also was additional uh, brush uh, that we collected because of the uh, tornado. And finally, uh, our private sector recycling is not terribly off from last year, and there is still a little more data that TDEC is in the process of collecting from some of the private companies like uh, Kroger and Public. So this number, uh, TDEC may adjust in the future, but it's gonna be somewhere probably close to this. At this time, I would be happy to see if there's any questions from the board. Wonderful. I, I see no hands up. Does that mean we're, we're the, the, the board is, I assume this means the board is quiet. I'm going to give you another 10 seconds if you want to unmute, if you're muted, to ask any questions of, uh, of Sharon or Jen. Mr. Chairman, this is Brenda Gilmore again. Representative mm -hmm. Dixie says that he still can't get in. The password doesn't work. Thank you, Senator. Um, uh, Sharon, I assume the the back yeah, the back office up there can can manage that. Yes. Yeah, we're we're working on that. Uh, the password is Metro. If anybody could text that to him, maybe that will help. Uppercase M. Lowercase. Okay, all lowercase. Okay. All right. So, um, uh, hearing that no Q and A from the board, are there any que uh, any public comments on this? And I just let you know that uh, Sharon, can you explain to the to the to to um, any of the folks attending how the public comment piece will work in terms of raising hands or notifying you? Yeah. So for public comments, and this would just be on the annual progress report at this time. You can, uh, if you're a panelist and you see your name, you can click on your name and you can raise your hand. Um, and mm -hmm. if you are uh, a attendee, you also have the ability to do that. But keeping in mind, this is only on, this is not on the landfill application. This is just on the solid waste plan. If you um, want to make comments, you can also call in on the phone number, which is, uh, pardon me. Lost the phone number, um, six, uh, six, two, nine, two, five, five, 1905. We'll give that number slow, out again. Slow, yeah, Pardon slow me? it down, say it one more time. Slow it a little bit, do it a little bit slower in case anybody wants to call in. Say that again. Yes. Six, two, nine, two, five, five, one, nine, zero, five. Okay. But once again, we're not to the landfill portion yet. So this would just be on the annual progress report. That's correct. Yes. And so I'm not seeing anybody. Uh, can you, uh, Sharon, uh, you'll, you'll alert me if there's any comments, yeah? I am not seeing any, um, yes, I'm not seeing any hands raised on the annual progress report. Okay. Well, I'm going to take that as there is no public comment uh, on this piece right now. And now I will turn to the board action having, uh, needing to, um, to approve the plan. Uh, there's, I was notified today that we actually have to make two motions. One's kind of a, one is kind of silly, but we have to make it. And the first is to, that uh, we need to approve modifications to the solid waste plan. And given that we don't have any modifications, uh, we have not made any modifications in the, in the past year. Uh, this, you know, it's, you have to prove the fact that we have no modifications. But I was told by legal and Sharon that we need to have a motion on that. And then secondly, of course, uh, a motion to uh, either approve or to deny the annual progress report. So I would entertain a motion on the modification issue first. I'd like to make a um, motion to approve that we have no modifications. Thank you, Demita. Is there a second? Second. I'll second it. It's Robert Deal. Uh, Robert Deal second. Okay. The motion is uh, uh, 
made and seconded. Uh, Sharon, roll call. Uh, Dale Grimes. Uh, you're on, you're muted, Dale. Sorry about that. I... Thank you. Uh, Jennifer Hackett. Uh, aye. Midori Lockett. Aye. Jeff McCormick. Aye. Jason Rupture. Aye. Oh, did I say Beth Reardon? Yes. John Schell. No. Um, oh, no, Beth you... Reardon. Um, I. Sorry. Uh, okay. <laughs> John Sherman. I. Lisa Smith. I. And Michael Sullivan. I. Michael, sorry about that. No worries. Well, very good. Well, clearly the motion carries. Um, the annual progress report will be signed by me and submitted to the state. Um, uh, a quick update on the mayor's uh, sustainability advisory committee. Um, that, I thought we had. Uh, hello, Sharon. Are you are you asking me something? If not, no. please mute. Okay. So uh, a, a quick update. A quick update on the sustainability advisory um, committee. Uh, Mr. Chairman, you, um, yes? I, I think we have to go back and do the motion to actually pass the report, don't we? You to approve, yes. Motions. I'm sorry, that's right. We only did the first motion. Uh, Mr. McCormick, I appreciate your, 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 your attending to the specifics. Well, with that, I'll <laughs> move that we pass it. Yeah, so we, we just approved the modification piece. Now we actually need to uh, entertain a motion to approve the plan itself, the annual progress report itself. So uh, with that, um, somebody have a want to make a motion? This is Midori Lockett. I move that we approve the annual report as it is currently written. Great. Thank you, Ms. Lockett. Mm -hmm. This is Jennifer Hackett. I second. All right. Motion made and seconded. Sharon, let's go. All right, to meet. Demita Beck Taylor. Aye. Robert Deal. Aye. Dale Grunge. Aye. Jeff McCormick. Aye. Beth Reardon. Aye. Jason Repture. Aye. John Sherman. Aye. Lisa Smith. Aye. And Michael Sullivan. Aye. Sharon, you didn't call my name. This is Midori Lockett. Well, my apologies, Midori Lockett. I keep skipping people. Oh, you had for, you had you'd made the first motion, so I okay. I don't call you on the second round. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Very good. Well, thank you, Sharon. Motion carries, and uh, we have now approved both the the, the non modifications. <laughs> as well as the annual progress report itself. Um, I will now quickly turn to the mayor's advisory sustainability advisory committee. Uh, the board may recall last, uh, we had a presentation on this and discussed it at the last meeting uh, and, and, and the previous two meetings, in fact. Um, suffice to say that the, we, uh, the, the, the committee made the presentation to the, the, the advisory committee presented to the mayor um, the final plan, this was for the, the recommendations for the climate action plan, which included a solid waste um, section um, that I was co-chair of along with, um, with uh, Todd. <laughs> um, uh, uh, with uh, urban, uh, the, the, yeah, the urban green lab. So the the the, the be, uh, Todd Lawrence the, the 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 outcome of all that is just really important is that pretty much uh, to a T that that climate action plan incorporates the zero waste plan. And uh, excitingly, it also lays out the, the amount of greenhouse gas reductions that we that will uh, that will occur uh, uh, that, will, that will occur and be avoided uh, by en enabling the plan. So I, I'll leave it at that. It's just know that that's happening and moving forward. Um, uh, but you know, really, the solid waste piece is dependent on just like us getting the plan implemented. So that's, but that's where we are. So um, no action required on that. It was just a quick update. Um, there is a there is a, a site that anybody can go to to visit that. I think if you just typed in Nashville Climate Action Plan, you'll 
you'll you'll you'll get to it. Um, I'm hoping. Uh, uh, if not, uh, Sharon will help 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 navigate that for us. Um, I'm going to turn now to the, the major point of business that, that I think everybody's here for, and that's the Southern Services Landfill Expansion a request that's made by Waste Management. Now, um, uh, the, you know, the board has received this application from Waste Management to expand the landfill, um, the, the Southern Services Landfill, uh, in, in, in the Bordeaux community. Um, it's a construction and demolition landfill. Uh, the uh, you know the, the the Tennessee Code 68211814 requires that newer expanding landfills submit an application to the Regional Solid Waste Board. That's us in this case, um, uh, and we uh, have to take that plan and uh, we have to take the application and see if it if it comports with the zero waste plan or it does not. And if it does not, then uh, we uh, can deny. And if it does, then we can approve. So either way. Today's meeting, we're really focused on whether or not that, you know, uh, so this is really for both the board and for um, public comment is that our job is to look at whether or not it meets the plan or not. And so uh, that is that just know that that's what we have to do. Those are the facts we have to look at. Um, there's plenty of other things we could be talking about this, 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 this application. I realize um, that, but those that is, uh, it very well could be outside the purview of the board, given um, that we, the plan, the plan drives what, you know, uh, how our, our decision-making. Um, so with that, I'm going to, uh, you know, ask the waste management to make a presentation. Um, more, we will then have an ability to answer, ask questions of, of, of waste management, and then we'll open it up for public comment. And uh, we're going to have this in two kind of two different pieces. Um, there are several elected officials who are uh, who are who have joined us, and that they are. Uh, we've asked them if they would be willing to speak first. Um, and then uh, once uh, the public officials have spoken, then we'll open it up to the public for, for comment. Um, given uh, we're, we're going to abide by the same rules as they have in, in city council, as the comments will be limited to three minutes apiece, um, you'll need to raise your hand or otherwise call into the number that Sharon provided. Um, and after three minutes, um, uh, we'll move on to the next presenter. So. Uh, uh, I would again just urge you to focus on to focus on the uh, on the the plan itself. So with that, um, Sharon, are you there? I'm here, and um, okay, so I, I'm going to turn this over to you and to help uh, bring in. I don't know who. I don't know Nancy Sullivan. Or I'm not sure who's presenting from Waste Management, but um, um, we turn it over to you. All right. So we have Don from uh, Waste Management. Don, I have given you. Um, the ability to share your screen, and um, you should be able to uh, do that now. And just let me know if you're having any problems. And Don, I don't know your title, but if you could just introduce yourself before you start, that'd be great. Yes, yes, please. And if you could make your screen a little bit bigger, if that's possible. That'd be helpful too. But I don't know if that's possible. I changed my. Excuse me. Also, if. Um, if folks aren't aren't um, aren't speaking, it's probably best to mute. And I'm going to mute myself so you don't hear my dogs or squeaky chair. Let me unmute myself first. Can you hear me now? Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. Sorry. I'm trying yes. to get through the technology here. Um, so, Don, what we can see is the presentation with the um, sort of agenda on the side. If there's a way to just pull up the. There we go. How's that? Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Um, okay, well, thank you very much for your time today. Um, uh, my name is Don Gentle Core. I'm the Senior District Manager for Waste Management. Um, and, you know, in, in terms of the agenda for the presentation, um, 
if you go through introductions, uh, myself and Nancy Sullivan from Triad, uh, we're gonna give some background on Southern Services, uh, the landfill and the eco park, uh, give an overview of the proposed expansion, uh, talk about its conformance to the solid waste master plan, and uh, then any discussion and questions uh, from the board on the plan. Um, we appreciate the, the board's time and the opportunity to present uh, this expansion and your consideration of our request. So uh, I'm a senior district manager with waste management. Uh, I have over 25 years uh, experience uh, managing post collection operations, um, including operation of landfills, recycling facilities, and organic recovery facilities and transfer stations. So as a senior district manager, I'm responsible for the oversight of Waste Management's Tennessee post collection operations, uh, which in Davidson County includes Southern Services and our MTEC CND recycling facility. Uh, Nancy, do you want to introduce yourself? Oh, sure. Um, hello, I'm Nancy Sullivan with Triad Environmental Consultants, and uh, I'm a principal engineer there. I've been working um, with waste management at this particular site since uh, 1998, and we've helped them obtain two expansions, and currently we're working with them on doing their environment, environmental monitoring, which uh, includes primarily the groundwater monitoring. So thank you. Thanks, Nancy. Um, so in terms of waste management in Middle Tennessee, um, you know, we really partner with Nashville on multiple solid waste management endeavors in support of the region's solid waste goals. Um, some of our, op our operations are shown here on the screen in Middle Tennessee. It includes the operation of the only single stream recycling facility on River Hills Drive. And that's called the River Hills MRF. Um, operation of two additional material recycling facilities on Myatt Drive, which is called the Nashville North Recycling Facility as well as a high grade facility, um, with, which is high, high uh, recovery materials on River Hills Drive as well. We also operate a transfer station on Antioch Pike in, in Antioch. Um, and that's really to collect and transfer uh, commercial and municipal solid waste uh, out of Davidson County. The material that is, uh, that is transferred at, at Antioch is disposed of at the Cedar Ridge landfill which is located in Lewisburg, Tennessee, and our West Camden Class 1 landfill, uh, which is located in Camden, Tennessee. Those are shown here on this map as well. Um, in green is the uh, Southern Services uh, Class 3, 4 landfill. Uh, in addition, our uh, MTEC C&D recycling facility. So MTEC is currently the only mixed C&D uh, waste material recovery in Nashville. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about that as we go through the presentation as well. So the Southern Services site has been used as a scrap operation and then as a construction demolition C&D landfill for more than 35 years. Uh, waste management currently owns and operates the landfill, uh, which is located off Briley Parkway. Uh, we accept only C&D materials uh, concrete, metal, asphalt, brick, these are inert materials uh, from residential and commercial building projects. Uh, the facility is not permitted to accept hazardous materials or materials that react to water and could lead to runoff or contamination risks. And, you know, in terms of previous slides, so it showed some of our facilities in Middle Tennessee. You know, we currently employ 23 full-time workers at Southern Services site and throughout Middle Tennessee over 250 workers. So this uh, Southern Services is operated under um, and regulated under permits from TDEC and as well we have a Metro Air permit for our operations. So those uh, govern our regulations and, and our uh, permits at the facility. <clears throat> this is to give a, a general overview of the, the location of Southern Services. I'll point out uh, you know, the facility is located in an industrial area. Um, it's bordered by Briley Parkway on the east, Ashland City Highway to the north, 
Cumberland River to the south, and then uh, you can see some of the neighboring uh, industrial operations, uh, including the concrete plant, uh, two mulch and composting facilities. Uh, the CSX Railroad uh, also comes through our property. Um, and then the John Toon Airport, you can see that just to the south of the facility. In terms of uh, the site itself, uh, the Southern Services, we refer to as the Class Three landfill, is a 77-acre facility here. Uh, the, the site also houses um, we refer to as the Eco Park. So the Eco Park uh, contains the MTAC C and D recycling facility, um, which is located uh, takes up about five to six acres of the Eco Park facility here. Um, in addition, Eco Park stages the materials that we recover uh, from the C and D re recycling operation. So recovered wood, concrete, uh, metal, uh, cardboard, which are then uh, shipped off for uh, reuse and recycling and recovery. <clears throat> the site today is 183 acres, um, and the currently permitted landfill. Uh, really takes up less than half of that. Um, the remaining acreage is devoted to conservation and operational support services. Um, I should go back a slide and point out, um, again, this, this green area is our property boundary, the Southern Services landfill. There's a 28-acre uh, wetland habitat here. Uh, it's a mitigated wetland and a certified conservation area uh, that's located on site. Um, that 28 acres, I said, is a certified wildlife habitat. Um, we've developed a partnership with the Tennessee Ornithological Society of Nashville to monitor the variety of birds and wetlands at the site. Um, and the Eco Park, as I said, houses the mixed C&D waste recycling and recovery facility. So that's primarily uh, materials that come to that facility our uh, lead designated uh, projects or developers um, that wish to uh, have a C and D recovery element as part of their project. So those are directed uh, materials to the MTEC facility. And then we'll recover um, usable materials, including metal, uh, untreated wood, uh, concrete and uncontaminated cardboard. And as I mentioned, those materials are then uh, sent to local recycling operations or uh, reused on, on the Southern Services site um, for site operations. As you know, as Sharon pointed out in, in the annual report, um, the volume of C&D waste generated in Davidson County has really increased significantly in the last decade to nearly double what it was in, in 2008. Um, more than 90% of the c &D material generated in Davidson County is sent to the Southern Services site. So you can see the chart, um, 2018 to 2016, or 2008 through 2016, these figures were taken um, from the Solid Waste Master Plan Executive Summary, and then the 2017 through 2019 data was added from the Solid Waste Board's um, annual reports. The 2020 uh, information that's shown here is just the uh, Davidson County tonnage that was landfilled at Southern Services. So as Sharon mentioned, you can see uh, the sharp increase that occurred in 2020. Um, a lot of that primarily is due to the uh, March tornado. Uh, following that tornado, and looking at the remaining uh, site life at the facility, uh, waste management, we project that Southern Services has only two to three years of capacity left. So when we permit and look at landfill operations, we look at airspace. Um, we don't permit for a time uh, horizon. It's how much airspace capacity do we have left? So based on uh, the annual receipt of C&D at the facility, uh, we project that that airspace will be completely exhausted within the next two to three years. Uh, without 
approval for an expansion. Uh, waste management will need to take actions to extend the life of the currently permitted landfill space, which could inc include increasing disposal rates and limiting the type or volume of material that waste management would accept at the landfill. In terms of the proposed expansion, again, you can see a diagram off to the right, the existing Southern Services landfill, the Eco Park, which includes a C&D recycling area, wetland habitat is shown here in blue, and then the proposed expansion area is shown here in green. Um, with only two to three years of capacity left and no viable alternatives, we filed this request for an expansion of the currently permitted landfill area. So this land is contiguous to the existing landfill operation and it's already owned by waste management. Again, based on current C&D generation disposal rates, uh, we predict that this expansion would provide an estimated 10 to 12 years of additional C&D disposal capacity at the facility. Um, this expansion process will likely take an estimated two to three years. So we're really at the beginning stages of this expansion process. Um, you know, the first step is coming before the solid waste board and presenting um, the concept for expansion. Um, but there's engineering and environmental studies uh, that are ongoing at the site. And, you know, we, we have not uh, made application uh, to TDEC yet for this expansion. So this is really the first step is coming before the board and discussing the proposed expansion plan. Um, the proposed expansion would also allow for continued operation of our MTEC facility. Um, even with the fact that MTEC receives um, directed loads from, from lead projects and um, from developers who are, who are going the extra mile to assure that their materials sorted for recycling, um, really only about 60% uh, of that material can be recovered uh, for recycling. You know, part of that is just like on um, traditional residential single stream recycling at your curb, the material that comes in is uh, contaminated, uh, cannot be segregated and sorted so that, that, so that it can be recycled um, or it just contains unrecyclable material that don't have uh, designated end uses yet. So, but an important component of the financial viability of a C&D recycling facility is the ability to have residual disposal. So that's what really allows this facility, the recycling facility to be uh, continually viable as, as we move forward. In terms of the solid waste master plan, um, you know, waste management is ready and willing to do our part to help the city um, achieve the ambitious zero waste vision outlined in its solid waste plan. But, you know, there is a long way to go and there's several challenges um, that Davidson County faces, including the high volumes of both commercial and C&D waste as, as demonstrated by the charts on the previous slides. And, you know, as Sharon illustrated with her update on the annual report, um, there are uh, low recycling and diversion rates um, for c and in the county now. Um, there's really no existing guidelines for c and waste disposal and limited existing infrastructure to help manage c and material. So they're really, you know, as part of the plan, there's frameworks, there's guidelines that, that I, I know the plan addresses over a timeline, um, but those do not exist at the present time. And there's really no market for a lot of the recovered c and material. Um, we've been able to develop some limited uh, markets for the recovered wood, the metal, uh, the cardboard, and the concrete materials. Um, but the other materials that are in C&D, there's really not an end market for those materials at this time. So in addition to the challenges, there have been several recent and really unexpected events that have impacted the plan's assumptions and really the progress to, towards implementing those goals. 
you know, the March 2020 tornado certainly accelerated the filling of, of Southern services, reducing the landfill's life. Um, the ongoing pandemic has uh, delayed the implementation of the plan elements um, and certainly led to a reduction in available funds for the initiatives. Um, again, unexpected events such as the Second Avenue uh, bombing and the cleanup and reconstruction, uh, those are going to um, result in additional unplanned debris. And, you know, the plan identified uh, two facilities to manage C&D material. Um, one of those was uh, atomic uh, resource recovery, and the other one was Southern Services. Well, atomic resource recovery uh, closed in September of 2020. So really, not only is there only one facility to uh, manage C&D debris in Davidson County, but there's only one mixed C&D recycling facility, which has our MTEC operations. And as I said, it's co-located with the landfill and it's really dependent on the landfill expansion to continue operating. So until the initial phases and implementation are other way, underway, really uh, stopgap adjustments and solutions are needed uh, to avoid setting the region's waste management goals back further. Um, which is why a modest short-term expansion of Southern Services uh, landfill is the most effective economic and environmentally friendly way for the region to manage its C&D waste over the next decade. Uh, the current site could not quickly or easily be repurposed and finding another location is uh, cost and time prohibitive. So this is a graph uh, from page 17 of the solid waste management plan you know, showing the timeline in terms of the implementation of, of the phases of the plan and really the diversion of waste um, doesn't really ramp up until uh, the end of phase four, which is, you know, 16 years in the future from now. So uh, the expansion of Southern services, you know, adding the additional 10 to 12 years uh, provides that bridge uh, for when to allow the city to implement uh, these, this phased uh, implementation of diversion um, in Davidson County. So the consequences of denying the proposed expansion, really disruption in Nashville's development and growth, the potential closure of MTEC, um, which is the only currently operating mixed c &D recycling facility in Davidson County, uh, c and material from Davidson County will need to be hauled further away, um, leading to an increase in greenhouse gas emissions, additional traffic congestion, and significant cost increases. Um, you know, the, the closest facility for c and debris disposal is approximately 40 miles away. Um, so when you think about that logistically, uh, what that means is that you're going to need uh, not additional, not only additional travel time, um, diesel consumption uh, to transfer uh, the waste material, but also you're going to need additional uh, trucks to, to handle that material. Whereas uh, a customer could be serviced within an hour to an hour and a half uh, with Southern Services operating, uh, transporting material you know, 40 to 50 miles away one way, uh, logistically, you would have to add additional uh, trucks uh, to service those same, that same customer base, uh, which would significantly increase congestion and slow down uh, the development and construction, de and, construction and uh, demolition projects. And it really disrupts progress towards the goals and timeline of the solid waste uh, management plan. Um, the solid waste management plan acknowledges that um, continuing the current approach of trucking waste over long distances to other communities for burial result in higher costs and lost potential for reuse or recovery. So the closure of Southern services um, would really force uh, that increase in long haul uh, of material. Um, additionally, uh, there's a Southern services uh, pays a mandatory fee to Metro, uh, which amounts to approximately $2 million per year. 
um, when the landfill becomes full in two to three years and with no expansion, uh, this would result in a significant source of revenue loss. Now, as I mentioned on the, and I outlined the, um, our operations throughout and surrounding uh, Davidson County, you know, we, we, we do have um, a very successful partnership with Metro um, and we're committed to continuing that partnership and to help Davidson County implement the solid waste plan. We, we want to be a part of the long-term solution, but that solution has to be done um, thoughtfully and um, with the goals of the plan in mind. So approving waste management expansion application is consistent with the plan because it really provides a viable and affordable option to assist Metro and the county in fulfilling the CND deposit program and recycling goals set out in the plan. It, it provides a it provides that bridge so that the um, the the necessary elements of the plan uh, to achieve uh, CND recycling and reduction goals um, are able to be uh, successfully implemented and in a, uh, a rational and reasonable manner. Um, it also supports uh, the plan's proposal to build supporting infrastructure for waste diversion. Um, the MTAC CND recycling facility, um, we've continued to uh, grow that operation. We've continued to uh, increase the recycling at that facility um, and certainly uh, allowing uh, the continued residual disposal at Southern Services uh, will allow us to continue that, um, that endeavor. Um, it reduced the potential regional environmental impacts of uh, long distance waste transportation associated greenhouse gas generation. Again, uh, Southern Services um, is proximate to the development of Nashville. Uh, its closure uh, would result in um, additional long haul um, options for the disposal of CND debris and would, would significantly in increase the greenhouse gases associated that, with that effort. Um, and it allows Metro to fund initiatives and programs um, from the revenue that Metro receives on waste disposed at the Southern Services landfill. Um, in conclusion, the board should approve waste management's application to expand the Southern Services landfill. Uh, this expansion, which will provide 10 to 12 years of, of additional waste capacity is consistent with the solid waste master plan because it ensures that MTAC, which again, the only remaining CND recycling operation in, in Davidson County can continue operating and really continue to, uh, to grow for the next 10 to 12 years. Uh, Metro will continue to receive its fee on CND waste disposed at Southern Services. Um, and the region is provided with affordable CND disposal capacity at the landfill, support the residential and commercial growth in the region. Um, additionally, the expansion ensures that greenhouse gas emissions will be minimized uh, due to the convenient location of the landfill. Without the expansion, Southern Services, uh, which is estimated to be full within two to three years, uh, C&D waste will have to be transported for longer distances to disposal facilities outside of Davidson County. Um, illegal dumping of C&D waste is minimized but with no other repositories for C&D waste. Once Southern Services reaches capacity, the increased costs associated with transporting the CND material outside the county is likely to result in increased illegal dumping. And Southern Services provides a conveniently located and affordable disposal facility for the county uh, when they need it to accept large volumes of CND debris resulting from natural disasters such as the 2020 tornado or the 2010 uh, flood that occurred. So based on the information waste management has submitted to the board, including our application, this presentation, and waste management's position paper and exhibits submitted on March 10th, uh, waste management believes the record clearly demonstrates that the Southern Services landfill expansion is consistent with the region's solid waste plan and that there is need for expansion. Therefore, waste management asks that the board approve its application to expand the Southern Services landfill. Uh, waste management also requires that everything waste management and our consultant 
Nancy Sullivan of Triad have submitted to the board in preparation for today's meeting becomes part of the official hearing record. This includes, but is not limited to the PowerPoint presentation we just gave and the documents submitted on waste management's behalf by Ms. Sullivan on March 10th, 2021 to Ms. Sharon Smith. Finally, we request that waste management's response to any written comments submitted by the public to the board regarding the application be made part of the official record. Again, thank you very much for your time. I will stop sharing my screen here. Wonderful. Um, uh, so thank you, Mr. General Corps, for that presentation. Um, I don't know uh, if, uh, if if that's it or if, if uh, Nancy Sullivan has anything to add. Or Nancy, are, are we done? Is the presentation complete at this point? Yeah, I, I believe that uh, we're ready to answer any questions that you might have. Very good. Very good. Thank you. So. Um, so the next step in this is the board uh, open up the board first for for any questions you may have of uh, of the application, the presentation, the materials that you received and were posted on uh, the Public Works website prior to the meeting. Um, and um, I just I would just say unmute and jump in, and I'll I'll kind of close it up. So, Ben. Thank, thank you, John. This is Lisa Smith. Uh, and thank you all for that very thorough presentation. Um, I would have a few questions and I, I jotted some down. Uh, one of the ones is you mentioned towards the end that you supported residential development. And then um, how does this does, uh, expanding your um, footprint do that? Sure. So when you know, when, when we talk about uh, the cost of disposal and the cost of affordable disposal, um, certainly one of the, um, in, you know, what, in terms of residential development, um, the cost of affordable housing is, is, is a big factor in that. Um, with, if Southern Services when that was not allowed to expand, um, that cost would increase. Um, as I discussed, you know, transporting waste further away, uh, the lack of affordable disposal nearby uh, is going to have a domino effect uh, that's going to uh, impact the affordability of housing. So, so you're saying that that would increase the cost to the to the builders and developers because they would have to drive further away. That's right. That would increase the cost of the devel developers, builders, who would obviously then pass that off to homeowners. Hmm. Um, well, um, is there anything that you have thought of to do directly to affect that? Uh, possibly uh, giving uh, discounts to developers who, who actually build affordable housing? You could, uh, are you offering any discounts to them to reduce the cost to drop waste there? I mean, I, I don't... We we have worked with developers and, and actually we had a group tour the facility a couple months ago that was partnering with Habitat for Humanity. Uh, and we did offer to, to work with them on some uh, disposal opportunities for them as well. So if, if people come out and want to discuss that with us, we're happy to discuss opportunities there. Absolutely. Would, would you be willing to publicize that after something materialized? Would you be willing? Uh, would we be able to publicize that that partnership? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sure. And then one one last question. Um, what I've noticed, I I have lived out there before in that same area, and if we divide, if we make Nashville a circle according to the uh, to the directional poles, north, south, east, and west, that whole north uh, eastern corner quad. It literally has nothing, uh, has one trail, just recently added three trails with Beeman Park, but nothing connecting to the rest of the city. And then one of the biggest things that the city had tried to do was to connect all the greenways and offer open green space to, uh, to citizens. And one of the things I've noticed is there's more industrial things going on out there. So as has that did, was that um, considered during the process of you developing this proposal? 
that there's already uh, industrialized development, no greenways connecting to downtown, uh, n none of the uh, uh, kind of, I guess, southwest going towards the northwest, nothing is connecting. It's like it's literally a gap open piece of like if this was a pie pan, that whole quad of pie would be empty. Okay. <laughs> if, if that pie was green space and open green space and park. So is it has any of that been considered since you have a, a kind of a habitat out there to consider adding any green walking trails or anything? I mean, that it's interesting you, you, you bring that up because that is an initiative in, that we are right now working on um, in our mitigation areas is making that uh, more accessible and, and figuring out a way to partner uh, with some local schools uh, to develop some trails in that area. Um, certainly, we're, we're open to uh, developing additional trails and, and, and greenway access. Um, you know, Waste Management as a company has hundreds of uh, wildlife habitats across the company, and uh, it's it's an initiative that we're pretty passionate about. So, thank thank you, thank you. This is Jennifer Hackett, and thank you for coming to give us this presentation today and for giving the materials in advance. I was able to take a look at those, and um, I just want to also say thank you for your partnership with education in the city. I know that the dumpsters at MMPS uh, have been, the recycling dumpsters have been a part of your plan as well as the education classroom, which I have been able to be a part of. So I appreciate your efforts at being a partner with the city. Um, I looked at your exhibit MN, uh, which largely was the plan that we worked so hard on. <laughs> and so, on slide six of your exhibit MN, it uh, indicates that correctly that we have a 30 year period to implement our zero waste plan as defined as 90% division. Your plan as you presented today seems to call for two to three years of running the current uh, period while planning for this expansion with public comment. Um, then there'll be 10 to 12 years of additional expansion, additional dumping, um, if you will, and that to me comes out to 15 years, if I'm following the math right, which is fully half of the time that we are trying to go down in our waste per the plan. So I'm, I'm unsure how the plan as you presented where there would be more waste uh, helps us to get to less waste. Sure. Well, in order to um, in order to be able to promote uh, CND recycling, the city in in your plan um, has initiatives in terms of developer initiatives, deposit programs, uh, education. Uh, those initiatives are going to take, again, according to the plan, fifteen to sixteen years to uh, implement. Um, the Southern Services facility provides a bridge to allow you to implement that. If the Southern Services was to close, um, what would happen is the market would go to more of a transfer and long haul market where you'd uh, consume capacity and transfer materials over long distances. Um, I believe in the plan, you also had Atomic as kind of offering that bridge so that you could implement uh, your diversion initiatives. If you look in your plan, Atomic was shown to increase their capacity. Atomic is now closed. You have to have um, a bridge as you move towards diversion with Southern Services offers. And so you're you're saying that you would like for us to approve because you offer the bridge that keeps things more local? Yes. Yeah, it, it keeps things more local. And, you know, as I mentioned, our Southern Services also has a CND recycling facility. In order for us to continue to increase the recycling there and the diversion there, um, it, it relies on a residual disposal element. So just, just like, just like a, you know, residential recycling has contamination and the CND recycling has has contamination in it. So 
um, in order to maintain a cost competitive structure, we need residual disposal to be close by. Um, so what I didn't see in your plan was any innovation to solve that problem, which is something that I would love to see, right? And I, I hear you that the that uh, we if you didn't have materials, then it would be hard to recycle them. Um, but I suspect that we're not the only location that's building, right? Nashville is not the only <laughs> area in Middle Tennessee. And so I'm just... I'm wondering what thought you've put into how to be innovative, how to solve the problem in a way other than expanding this landfill site. Well, I, I think, you know, this is a, a modest expansion. So our thought is that, Jennifer, we would continue to partner with the city as we have done on the on the residential recycling side. We we'd love to partner with the city on the C and D recycling side and help develop programs and policies. Uh, that encourage additional C and D recycling. We'd love to work with the city to identify end markets uh, for recycling, uh, but but those those are going to take time to develop. Uh, that's not going to occur overnight. So that's why uh, we feel the expansion of Southern provides that bridge, so that smart policies and procedures can be put in place that allows really a, a solid C and D recycling infrastructure to be developed. Um, that can work for the long term. And so we've known for quite some time about this timeline, right? That this, you only had two to three years left. And so um, help me to understand what's been happening leading up to today. Has there, has there not been any discussion about how to innovate to solve for those problems in a way other than expanding the landfill? Well, I think that, you know, as, as I think you've recognized in, in the city's plan, those initiatives and incentives are really city initiatives. So there's there's market conditions and there's incentives, there's developer incentives, deposit incentives that the city needs time to create so that that can foster um, a productive c &D recycling operation. The conditions don't exist right now to do that. Atomic was a c &D recycling operation didn't have a residual disposal app, didn't have a residual disposal uh, close by to it. Atomic is closed. You don't want to not have supporting infrastructure. You know that you have a large amount of C and D debris being developed, being generated. You know that that's going to continue as Nashville uh, grows. You want to make sure that you have supporting infrastructure in place uh, to support that growth. So. A bridge is the disposal at Southern Services, which allows the city time to put initiatives in place uh, to encourage diversion and recycling, whether it's whether it's incentives to developers, whether it's um, you know uh, permit uh, requirements, you know whatever those code requirements are, those need to be developed, um, and then wait and waste management's willing to work with the city to help encourage that. Thank you for answering my questions. Sure. This is my result, if, if I'm good to go. Um, you know, real fast, uh, I know you mentioned the amount of, uh, sorry, I've got a kid in my car crying, but um, uh, the, the tornado certainly increased the amount of waste um, that we saw at C and D, um, and that that definitely shortened your guys' timeline. Do you have any any sort of estimate of what that exact was, and if you're still continuing to see the increase in waste from what was previously, I guess, forecasted uh, before the tornado? I mean, Michael, we're still seeing some of that because obviously the what, the majority of the material that we received last year was the debris from the cleanup, but now there's the rebuilding that's going on. Right now, so uh, we're we're continuing to see uh, an uptick in that debris at the facility. Okay, great. And and, and then uh, how that may have affected the the forecast that you guys had previously for the operation of the, the land, landfill. Um, again, it was 
probably it's probably shorten the life by about a year. All right. Thanks. That that was my my main question there. Okay. Thank you. Hi, this is Demita Beck Taylor. So can you can you share a bit about timelines in regard to reuse? So right, if we have the two to three years that are remaining, um, what that would lead to in reuse time for that that land space versus the requested expansion of 12 to 13 years and how quickly um, that land, if if ever, could be reused. Um, so, I mean, are you talking about the site where to close the reuse? Is that your? Uh, nope, the, the space that you're currently using to, uh, that, that has waste. Um, okay. We have a point where, um, so if, if we keep on the same track and you have the two to three years that are remaining, yeah. how, how quickly, if ever, could we reuse that land space if we keep on the same track versus expanding to the 12 to 13 year mark? So are you talking about how quickly that um, how quickly that area would fill up? Is that what you're asking me? Or no, like one, once it's filled and it gets to settle, okay. kind of like ten roads, like the, the it's it's a, an old landfill, right? So how long right. before we do something like that with that space, if if ever? Um, well, I mean, uh, the site's going to have you know, if you if you consume the two to three years, the site would need to be then capped and closed in accordance with the regulations. Um, and there's a monitoring period uh, that would occur. Um, you know, the site would, is, is not going to settle because it's a CND landfill. Um, it's not, doesn't have uh, like a municipal solid waste landfill would, would decompose and settle over time. These are primarily inert materials. So, um, you know, really the, the options, um, you know, we would we would primarily utilize the eco park could be used, um, but the landfill itself, I mean, could be used for passive hiking, you know, in conjunction with the uh, wetland area. I mean, there's, you know, there there's reuse options. I don't know what kind of development you had in mind though. Any any development? So you mentioned there's a mandatory wait times. Can you share a bit more about what those would be? For the cap and close, the mandatory after. Nancy, do you want to handle that? Uh, yeah, I believe the monitoring continues for for um, two to five years, depending on what type of monitoring you're talking about for the groundwater. So two to five years after once it's at capacity. Yes, and 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 you shouldn't be able to use the site for you know other um, things while you're doing the monitoring. It wouldn't interfere with anything, I don't believe. But okay, thank thank you. Both. This is uh, Michael Sullivan, and uh, you know, I have one uh, question, and I guess it's more for 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 Metro of um, during the cleanup of the tornado, uh, were there any additional recycling programs that we implemented um, uh, to handle some of the excess uh, building C and D waste? So oh, this is Sharon Smith. So some of the stuff that we did was require residents to put stuff in three separate piles. We collected um, over 100,000 tons of uh, tree limb and, and tree debris and I don't have the exact number, but a fair amount of scrap metal. So the three piles were the rubble, that was just all the mixed uh, debris, um, tree waste, and separately uh, any metal items. And that allowed us to significantly reduce what uh, material um, our contractor had to haul off. And then where was the holding off to at the, the different piles? Uh, specifically so, the C and D waste. Was it taken to Southern Services? Yes, yeah. And the uh, tree limbs and stuff was taken to, I believe, um, our uh, uh, tree, our mulch contractor, and then the 
scrap metal was probably taken someplace like uh, PSC. This is Jennifer Hackett again. I um, have another question that I forgot about. Hey, Jennifer? Yeah? Can, you, can, can we see uh, before we, uh, if there's any other board members who haven't asked questions yet, um, please hold the question. I just want to make sure everybody has a chance that maybe, I don't know if there's anybody in line. Uh, if no one speaks up, then just jump in. I just want to make sure if any other board members have something to say. Uh, this is me, Dory Lockett. Uh, this probably, it may sound like a very naive question, but, or comment at rather. Um, you mentioned in your pre presentation um, that you would be willing to work with Metro on the recycling reuse plan, but it'll take time for us to implement that. And I'm curious whether or not waste management would be interested in taking the lead in creating some kind of plan and then Metro could partner with you on your plan until if we don't have the time. In other words, is there some way that you're willing to incentivize the folks who currently use the landfill, the, the C and D, the developers um, use the landfill to incentivize them to recycle, reuse before they bring the stuff there? I mean, we're so flipping, flipping we're, the script a little bit. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're certainly willing to, you know, provide the city with, with successful models that have worked at, at other locations across the country and to work with the city to implement, you know, something that we know will be successful. And, um, you know, we, we're more than, we're more than willing to take the lead on that with the city, with the city. Absolutely. Thank you. Sure. Jennifer, I think you might be back up if no one else has any questions that they're dying to ask at the moment. Take it away. Hey, um, so I noticed also in your report that there's a lengthy public comment period. And I am just wondering if the public rose up in unison and said, we do not want this in, in our backyard. Do you have an option to say, all right, we hear you and we will not do this. Is that something that that waste management would do? I mean, we're certainly willing to work with the public to resolve concerns. I mean, we certainly understand that there's concerns with any, with any of these facilities and we're willing to work with the public to help resolve those concerns. But, but, we, but we feel like um, the expansion of the facility is in, you know, the best interests of of Davidson County and, and, and certainly in the best interests of, you know, managing C and D debris. So, so we're, so we're willing to, to listen. We're willing to communicate, um, and address questions and concerns that, that, that residents have. I hear you say you're willing to problem solve, but what I'm not hearing is whether or not you would say no like we hear you and we choose to not move forward with this project because you've spoken so clearly. That's something that would be made at a higher level than me, Jennifer. How's that for a response? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I have a couple more. Thank you for, for at least telling us that part, <laughs> that, that it would be a, another a decision that you couldn't make right now, because at least we, we know that. Uh, but a couple more things. Um, what do you have successful models where you have um, developed alternative recycling, reuse, um, uh, disposal models? And what are they? Where are they? And why aren't you using them for this? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm certainly happy to, to reach out to my counterparts in other parts of the country and provide the, those models. Um, but but those those again, Lisa, are really public-private partnership models. In other words, the municipality has to enact several initiatives um, to make those successful. But we're certainly uh, willing to provide Metro with what we feel are successful partnership models, so that uh, you can review those and use those as a template uh, to help implement uh, some of these strategies. Yeah, we would definitely like to see them. And um, I'd like to touch back on the innovation piece because, um, 
you know, C and D is, you know, you're saying that it's rubble and metal and some metal and some wood. And um, we all know what uh, builders do with the trash. It's, you know, it's it's uh, paint. It could be, um, um, uh, you know, pre-painted pieces of wood. It could be, you know, anything that could be toxic. And then even if it's a small piece here or a small piece there, when you pile those small pieces up, uh, it becomes a, a toxic fume mess. And it's right on the river. 77 acres is not a small space. Um, and then at one point, I don't know if there's any more numbers that have, that have been posted, but at one point, the zip code of 37207 had the highest rate of asthma in the state among children and young and older and young adults. So I, I don't think that's an insignificant thing. And I don't think that um, there could possibly be some contribution uh, is what I'm saying, uh, just because how of how close the river is to that area and how close the river is to your facility. Um, it is definitely concerning to me, uh, the potential for that. It, are, is there any innovative, uh, I understand you guys are your business and your private business, you're there to make money. I, I'm, I'm okay with that. I want to make money too, but what are, what is, what's the innovation there? What, what, what are your engineers doing to create, you know, any, you know, are they trying to develop any bugs that eat up all that stuff? Are they, you know, are they, you know, is anything going on like that? I mean, Nancy, do you want to touch on, you know, the monitoring that's done at the facility? And, and again, Lisa, they mentioned this is a regulated facility. So we're monitored, we're regulated by TDAC, we're inspected uh, by TDAC. Um, we've got a Metro air permit. Um, we've got stormwater permits at the site that we need to, you know, be in compliance with. We monitor groundwater around the facility. Um, so there's, there's environmental controls and monitoring in place. Uh, for this facility in terms of material that comes there um, up between our scale house, our equipment operators, our site management, they're trained to identify unauthorized waste materials and segregate them. Um, I understand, but, but, yeah. But there's, and, yeah, you know, and, there's, and, there's, and there's other, you know, and there's, you know, other um, environmental controls that are in place at, at this facility. And again, I will welcome any you or any member of the public that has concerns or questions and wants to come out and see the facility, absolutely come out and see it. Love to show you the facility, um, answer any of those questions anyone has. So I, I would love to. Could, should we get in touch with you or Nancy to do that? Uh, you can get in touch with me and Sharon has my email to do okay. that. Sure. I, I will say briefly, just with regard to the innovation, a lot of the innovation takes, techniques that you hear about um, are more pertinent to facilities that take municipal solid waste that have the organics and and those types of materials that they can break down or process or change into uh, energy. And, you know, the materials that we take at Southern Services are pretty inert. So what you can do with those are somewhat limited um, to, you know, pr processing and reuse, uh, but waste management's always looking for new ways to uh, manage and handle and process solid waste. I'd like to see a bracelet come out of it, <laughs> like the like people do with the plastic in the ocean. <laughs> anyway, something. Don, I just want to check in. I know that you're the senior district manager for this area for waste management. And so if you're not the guy at the top that makes the decisions about whether or not to withdraw a project request, if requested by the community, who is? Who who are, who is the city working with? Well, I mean, in 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 terms of diversion techniques and technologies, is that what you're asking, Jennifer? No, so I'm pointing back to my earlier question about your public comment period. And if the public came and said, hardline, no, thank you, <laughs> then then do you withdraw the proposal and not do an expansion? And, and you said that would be a higher you know, pay grade than me to make that decision. And so I am wondering who who makes that decision? Oh, that, that would be, you know, 
you know, that would that would go all the way up to our senior leadership team in Houston. So I mean that that's a decision that you know would not be made locally. Locally, we're here to support the operation. Um, we're here to support Metro and day to day operating the facility. But those are business decisions that that would be made at, at different levels than me. So. So does that mean that if if the community comes out and says no, that you're going to do it anyway? Uh, Lisa, I, we're, we're committed to uh, listening to public comment and addressing concerns as we go through this process here. I mean, that's what we have to go through this process with the very start. And yeah, we appreciate the opportunity to continue to educate the public as we go through the process and you know, ex explain, you know, our, our, our point of view and uh, provide the engineering studies, the environmental studies, uh, which Nancy and her group are working on. So I think that uh, all of those elements have to be considered uh, in whole. So. Hmm. Okay, well, uh, that's very interesting. And we will probably, um, yeah, I, I kind of would follow Ms. Hackett's question that it's very interesting if, if the community comes out against it, it's going to go through anyway. But uh, we'll, we'll, yeah. Okay. Thanks. This is Robert Deal. Um, I see in your presentation on page nine, it states at the uh, fourth paragraph, uh, without approval for expansion, waste management will need to take actions to extend the life of the currently permitted landfill space, which could include increasing disposal rates and limiting the type or volume of material that they will accept at the landfill. Is this a, a have you even considered what this model might be? Is there a plan for, for uh, how you're going to deal with this if the expansion is not approved? In terms of restricting materials? In terms of increasing disposal rates and restricting materials, yes. Um, we we are evaluating those options. Yes. Yep. Any idea how 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 much more life you might get out of the current uh, capacity if you were to implement these? Uh, we we wouldn't know. No, I mean it would be a progressive implementation, Robert. So. And thank you for the presentation. I appreciate you getting it to us ahead of time. It was nice. Sure. Thank you. I have a logistics question, Don and Nancy. Do you live in Davidson County? Um, I live in Donaldson. Uh, I live in Williamson County. My office is at Southern Services. Thanks. Other, other questions from the board? This is uh, Jason. Uh, sorry, I do have one. So, Don, would uh, is one is one of your possible models to simply commingle? Uh, if Southern Services was was not able to expand, would you commingle the C and D with your MSW with your other transfer station in Antioch and uh, take it to the one of the other municipal landfills in the area? I mean, that, that would be something that would be under consideration is that you would commingle or transfer material together, yes. Appreciate it, thank you. Um, where, where around the state, do you have a map that shows, or is it on your website, that shows the location of your current landfills and the capacity of them all? Um, and our landfills across the entire state? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I mean, T there's a TDEC provide, we have to provide annual tonnages and capacity to TDEC. So there's information on not only our facilities, but other uh, facilities across the state of Tennessee in terms of their um, uh, their capacities and their annual uh, disposal. Okay. And I'm sure Sharon has access to that. If not, we can certainly provide that chart. Okay. Thank you. 
Lisa, I know that some of that's in the plan as well. And I'm not sure, Sharon, if I, I don't recall seeing it in the annual report, but it may well be there too. Yeah, that progress report. Good point. Okay, thanks. It is not in the progress report because it's not something TDEC requires us to gather, but they do publish a list of life ex, uh, expectancy for class one and uh, uh, two landfills. Um, I've got the 2020 document, but it doesn't include C and D landfills. It's just uh, municipal solid waste landfills and class two, which are the industrial landfills. Other Other questions? Uh, John, this is Jeff McCormick. I got a question for Sharon. Uh, Sharon, if if I'm correct, this is all of Davidson County's waste basically goes to Rutherford County except for the C and D. Correct? Um, not it. Well, Metro contracts with Republic, so all of our waste from Metro government goes to Republic, and then of course Republic has other customers. So it is divided, and um, uh, you you can see in the actual longer report, uh, and I apologize, I probably should have put that on the presentation, but um, the bulk of the waste out of Davidson County does go to Middle Point Landfill, but uh, uh, both the, hang on one second, um, Cedar Ridge, is it Cedar Ridge? Um, Hang on a second. Uh, I've got a copy of the report right here. Um, so we even have a tiny bit of waste that goes to BFI and North Shelby. Uh, Cedar Ridge gets about, so Middle Point gets about uh, 430,000. Cedar Ridge gets about 264,000. And West Camden gets 197,000. Those are the top three with Middle Point being the first and then Cedar Ridge and then uh, yes. West Camden. So out of- Hey, uh, Jeff and, and, and Sharon, just real quickly, if um, if this is only pointed, if this question, Jeff, is really for the city, I think, can we hold off on that? So I wanna make sure that the public has a chance to have to, to participate. Um, but if there's a question, Jeff, that you're pointing back towards, um, towards uh, you, you know, Southern services, then, and then great. I just want to make sure that we um, that we can spend our time asking that question after the public has their opportunity to speak, um, if that makes sense. If it's not a question to Southern Services. Well, no, it was more to Jennifer's question asking where they lived. I mean, I think everybody in Davidson County's trash goes out of the county, you know, as far as where they live. Right. Got it. Um, other other questions? Well, I'm gonna I'm just gonna I'll, I'll close just with a question then about um, this the I uh, 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 regarding the the recycling bit of it. You know, there was I, I thought I read in your report that you had there was quite a bit of recycling happening on site, and then you showed the state the state chart of C and D. Uh, how much of the CND was being recycled versus was being landfilled. And for 2020, I saw no green, I only saw blue. Um, so um, uh, can you clarify what percentage of the waste that's coming to your, to the landfill is actually being recycled? Um, and I, I understand about contamination, we all get that. It's just a matter of it, it's, um, what's the percentage? Yeah, so John, the, the chart that we showed in our presentation was really just landfill material at Southern Services. That's why there was no recycling shown uh, for 2020. Um, so uh, about 78% of the material that comes to the facility is directed to MTEC. So remember, the c &D recycling facility only is accepting materials from those projects that are either seeking a lead designation or have a recycling component to them. So about 8% of the material that comes through the gates there is directed to MTEC. And then we're probably able to recover about 60% of that material by volume. So with 40% going to residual. Right, so, so all right, very good. That, that's helpful, thank you. Okay. Um, 
Uh, and, you know, I, I, I think the board asked really great questions, so I'm not going to repeat what others have said. So at this time, if there are no other further questions from the board, um, I want to turn it over. Uh, I want to open it up for public comment. First being our elected officials. Um, I can see uh, Senator, I know Senator Gilmore uh, wanted to have, I think, believe wanted to speak. I believe Council Member Hall, as well as uh, Representative Dixie. Um, with that, though, I first uh, just want to also thank you, um, uh, uh, Don and Nancy, for the presentation and for um, uh, for putting it together and for informing us. So with that, though, I think, uh, I mean, it's time, uh, if there are no other further questions from the board, to ask our representatives and senators and council people to um, uh, identify themselves, and uh, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Whom, whom did you want to go first? Uh, Senator Gilmore, please. Okay, okay, thank you. Thank you. This is Brenda Gilmore. I have the honor of serving as uh, Senator District 19, which includes part of Bordeaux. So, Mr. Chairman and members of the Davidson County Solid Waste Regional Board, thank you for this opportunity to speak to you about the expansion request. Neighborhoods in Nashville have said many times, not in my backyard. As a result, the people in Bordeaux have had to put up with landfills in their neighborhood for decades. I served as Metro Councilwoman in this district in 1999, and 20 years later, we're still asking that we stop the expansion of landfills. Many council persons before me fought the same fight. There's no question this dump has changed the damage, the quality of life. One of the biggest problems caused by this landfill, and there are many, but one of the larger one is, is the rotten odor. The alpha smell is so horrible for the economy. Who wants to open a business or buy a home near a landfill that produces a gas that smells like rotten eggs? This landfill has depressed housing prices and the overall quality of life in the Bordeaux areas. Neighbors cannot come out and have outdoor activities like other families because the odor is so strong. Stores, restaurants, business, and high-end homes are being built in every quadrant of the city except Bordeaux. We believe it's a direct result of having an overabundance of landfills and other industries in our neighborhood, not just year after year, but decade after decade. As our population increases, we generate more trans, and we're only going to see more hydrogen sulfide, which creates a horrible smell. And now the owners of Southern Services wants to expand the dump even further into the community. There's a clear pattern of racial and socioeconomic disparities in the distribution of landfills. Minorities and low-income communities are seen as the path of least resistance because there are fewer resources and less political clout to oppose them. This community is tired of being the city's dumping ground. We have the burden of housing the city's trash for too long. We believe that this is a local issue and based on the Jackson law that Metro Council and the legislative body should uh, grant approval. We are asking the mayor and Metro Council to defend the Jackson law and respect the values of the neighbors who live in the Bordeaux area as all next uh, as all Nashvillians and furthermore this plan that is being requested by waste manage is in direct conflict with the solid waste master plan and I quote on pages 8 2 and 9 4 it says furthermore with Metro Nashville aggressively working to reduce reliance on landfills this plan does not include recommendation for any new or expanding landfills in Davidson County. Permitting new or expanding landfills would be inconsistent with the goals of this plan. This request by Waste Management and Southern Service is not consistent with the Solid Waste Master Plan. And I assure you, I heard the presenter before me, which did a, a good job, said this is a short-term request. This is not a short-term request, and certainly not a modest request. In another decade, we'll be at the same place, 
Waste Management or another company, XYZ Waste Management Company, will be asking for another expansion. I ask you today, Mr. Chairman and members of the Davidson County Solid Waste Regional Board to deny the request to expand this landfill. Thank you again for the opportunity to come before you. Thank you, Senator. Um, much appreciate you taking time in your late afternoon to, to attend the meeting and give us your comments. Um, I'm just going to go down the list now. So, um, Representative Dixie, um, where, are you uh, John, available yeah. and to speak? John, hey, John, this is yes. Michael Sullivan. I, I just, I know we've got a lot of public comments to get through it, and I know that one of Sharon's first emails mentioned that um, the, the Jackson Law information is only purview to the Metro Council. And so yes, I, so I Michael, I think we'll we'll take that up when we have our board discussion. We'll have we'll have plenty of time to address any of the comments that have been made. So we don't okay, need to I talk about it. Right sure yep. I just want to make sure we say. Well, time. we'll we will definitely get to that. So that's uh, we'll just you know if it needs to be addressed. So just um, um, uh, hang with us, be patient. Let's uh, let's hear the com public comments first and the comments from our elected officials. Um, um, Representative Dixie, if you could, uh, if you're ready to speak, and then I'll, then uh, Council Member Hall uh, after that, and then if there are other representatives I'm not aware of, please also speak up after these two have spoken. All right. Thank you so much, John. We appreciate the opportunity to have a chance to speak. Um, when this all started, uh, maybe I think Senator Gilmore and I um, start this quest over a year and a half ago, close to two years ago. And I, I'm speaking out of two hats. One, I am speaking because I'm representing my district, but I'm also representing as a, a resident that lives just about two mile radius from, from this landfill. Um, so when it started, I asked three questions. What's causing the smell? Is it harmful? And can it be fixed? Um, so we've heard a lot of things of, yes, it's within the requirements um, of, of, of the FAA and, and, and other uh, agencies. But what we have to realize is it says maybe it's one part per billion that and the nose can detect or one part one one million one part mil, per million um, is what is harmful. Well, over time, over 50 years, there's no determination or been no study that if it may be at that particular moment, it may not be harmful at that particular time. But over time, that cumulative effect can really have an impact on our health. So we were in by waste management's own admission. They said there are no really requirements or guidelines for helping achieve the Metro Zero Waste Plan and to make significant strides toward that. Um, we have, our community has been so used to the bait and switch method that has been used so many times before. Um, since 1990, the facility has expanded a maximum from 4.5 acres to 183 acres. And if this expansion goes through, it will be a uh, 77 acre landfill and a 200, it will, it will expand to a 200 acre facility with a 95 acre landfill. And there's a history that, that makes it 50 times its size in 30 years. So it's gone from 4.5 acres. And if this expansion goes through to 95 acre landfill, which is over abundant. And I, I, I do not believe that's in accordance with the zero, Metro Zero Waste Plan. But there's a history of mistrust in our community and expanding this landfill is not consistent with Metro Zero Waste Plan. It continues, as Senator Gilmore said, to depress our home values and the loss of, and it, that is some of our, our residents' biggest and largest investment that they are making in their lifetime. And so we need to make sure that we protect those investments. And, and in the presentation, they said that there's a loss of money to Metro uh, by moving this landfill. Well, that is no consequence of, to my community. Uh, Metro and Waste Management have, have raked in millions of dollars over the years, and our community has not received any benefit from it at all. So given the great relationship that Metro and Waste Management have, I believe that they could come up with another viable option for Nashville C&D uh, waste. Um, the expansion will only exacerbate, exacerbate the horrendous smell and expand the radius of the smell. There's no way expanding this 17 acres will reduce the impact it's having on our community. And I truly believe that this expansion is not in accordance with Metro Zero Waste Plan. Um, it will only continue to hurt our community economically and health-wise. 
And who wants to live in one of the, who want, when they make their, this largest investment in their lives, who wants to live in a 200 acre waste management facility that's in a 95 acre landfill? So a couple things I, I would like to give Ms. Jennifer Hackett. Um, the public has risen up to say, we don't want this in our community. We had a town hall meeting and over a hundred people, residents surrounding this area from Scottsboro all the way over to the other side of Kings Lane um, came in and we did a poll at the end and it was a hundred percent, the sentiment was a hundred percent that they did not want, they were not for this expansion. And what I would like to ask uh, waste management, is there an engineering study that we can confidently rely on to determine how long it will be before the landfill is full? Um, we need to know how much time is left without the expansion. And, and lastly, I just want to say this landfill will always be a part of this community because it doesn't decompose. And between three and five years, who knows what that smell will be like right now. Right now, it's un, it is still horrible but it's, we have to do something in order to mitigate this. As Senator Gilmore said before, we shouldered the burden of Nashville CND waste problem for years, and it's time for someone else to do it. But I truly believe this expansion is not consistent uh, in achieving the goals for the uh, Metro Zero Waste Plan. Um, thank you for giving us the time to, to say this, but I think you will hear the overwhelming sentiment from our residents and our community that we are against this uh, facility. And one last thing, the, the tipping fees that he mentioned. I just want to I just wanted to emphasize that. Metro and waste management have made millions of dollars off of this. And our community has not benefited from it at all. I will turn it over to uh, Councilman Hall. I think he was next in line, but thank you again, John, for. Uh, giving me, giving all of us a chance to speak. Thank you very much, Representative. I appreciate uh, you you showing up. And uh, yes, um, so uh, Councilman Hall, I believe you're next up. Thank you, Chairman. Um, thank you, Board. Um, thank you, Senator Gilmore and, and State Rep Dixie. And thank you to Waste Management, Don and, and Nancy, for um, taking the time out to come and, and speak with us. Um, I'm going to be brief. Um, and probably change the tone slightly. But I think what you've heard from the two previous speakers and State Rep Dixie and Senator Gilmore who have lived in this community for years and from a council member who in his 48 years of life has been sandwiched between two landfills because it took us decades to get past what happened off of County Hospital Road only to simultaneously be dumped on again with this site. And so with that in mind, um, I, I, I do take issue with some of what I believe to be some grossly inflated assumptions um, that I heard in the presentation. Um, we are at a point where the growth in this city is at an all time high, has continued to be. Years ago, I sat in front of this board when then Councilman Leonardo was fighting to have Jackson Law implemented with the community. And I know that information hasn't been discussed with the board, but you have to excuse us because this is not a new conversation for us. This is a conversation that we actually were having in 2015 and 2016 and preparing for in 2017. And so as a resident speaking before this board then and speaking before council in 2017, um, this is just a continuation for myself and all of the folks in District 1 who have had to live with this for, in some capacity, for the last 60 years. What I want to emphasize is what you heard, again, from State Rep Dixie and from Senator Gilmore, that specifically in the solid waste plan, master plan, it states that the expansion or permitting of a new landfill is not in line with this plan. It is not consistent with the goals of this plan. And I take umbrage with, you know, the, the conversation surrounding innovation and, and recycling and things because years ago we had the conversation, how, what percentage of recycling was being done at the site? And we were told it was little to none then. That has continued and not improved. 
just because you're almost at capacity and have less time doesn't mean magically now that we get to say, oh, we should start to do, look at this or do something. When the community meeting and town hall took place to state Dixie, state rep Dixie referred to, we were told point blank that no, nothing else as an option had been looked at. No alternative sites had been searched for as of yet. But we as a community have known and been preparing for this. Metro has developed a plan surrounding this. And so it's odd that everyone else has done something or been looking toward the future and what it is we need to do. The, the, the direct deterrent and economic growth to this community, the direct deterrent to home values to this community, both commercial and residential. And as you heard my two predecessors speak in terms of the health concerns, you're talking about a community who's been sandwiched between landfills for over 60 years and who now has the largest gas compression pipeline whose fallout and emissions land on this same community in North Nashville. Further exasperating that, this is a community that averages two chronic illnesses per household, per individual. And now in the midst of COVID has the highest fatality rate in Davidson County for COVID related illnesses. There's a elementary school in walking distance from this landfill. This is something we have continued to endure for far, far too long. When you look at the fact that, you know, and uh, this will come in the form of a question also, but, you know, we mentioned the recycling. We mentioned that the fact that during the tornado, the increased debris shortened the lifespan from two to three years to maybe two years or at least by a year. With the continued growth in the area everywhere else except in this district, who has been deterred because of this to the point of our population even dropping. And this is a community of wholly senior citizens and baby boomers who have dealt with this for decades and decades and decades now. Specifically, again, you heard Senator Gilmore and State Rep Dixie mention or quote the solid waste plan with Metro Nashville aggressively working to reduce the reliance on landfills. This plan does not include the recommendations for new or expanding landfills in Davidson County. And then again in section nine, permitting new or expanding landfills would be inconsistent with this plan and the goals of this plan. So we can talk about a lot of different things, but at the end of the day, this is in our process years ago while we fought in 2017 to have Jackson Law implemented so that we could rely on this board to make consistent decisions based upon the facts, based upon the direct impact to the community, and now subsequently falling under the jurisdiction of the Jackson Law, which reverts that back to the city council who voted in 2017, 31 to five to institute that. We now have Metro Legal and the administration who for the first time have come out and directly said, we agree with this community, enough is enough, and we will defend this with you. And lastly, we want to talk about the fact that, you know, no visible options just isn't true. We know the impact is having on the community. We know the impact it's having on the city. There's no real cost benefit, as State Rep Dixie said, not a dime or benefit in the 30 plus years that we've dealt with this particular site. Has this community seen a single benefit, only detrimental cost? We know that moving forward, other options have to be in place. But with two years of capacity and having a master plan that we've been discussing for almost a decade now, this is simply a case of too little too late and too much damage having been done. This community is 1000% in support of this body, meaning this board and of the city council to not allow another landfill or expansion of a landfill in Davidson County. 
We are directly impacted, but now it has gotten to the point where folks on the other side of Briley, all of the news articles, news stories, press conferences from the other side of Briley Parkway now are out. Those folks are seeing and smelling this for miles away. At the end of the day, we have a number of mitigating factors that play into this, but just on the facts and what this board is to, here to recognize and focus on is that plan and what is consistent with it. And nothing in this plan that has been presented for this expansion is consistent with the goals or objectives of this plan. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councilman Hall. Um, uh, I appreciate you also showing up for the for our hearing tonight. Um, and Chair, really quickly, quickly, not not to interrupt, Chair, really quickly. Um, I know we've got a lot of folks in the queue, but I do see um, two predecessors here in the group. Um, previous Councilman Leo Donato, who's worked on this diligently and was there while we fought for this before. And uh, I see Dan Lane, who was formerly a yes. member of your board and also lives in this community. And I would ask that you recognize them so that um, as, as someone who formerly served and, and has some great input. Thank you. And I, I, I appreciate that. And I also noticed that they, that they were, um, uh, uh, attending, and I, I, I'm, I'm glad. And um, I, I see that uh, Mr. Lane has uh, has his hand up. Um, uh, I'm not sure about the the, the, the council member as well, uh, our previous one. Um, but uh, uh, how I would I, I would I recommend going forward is we have them speak um, if they have their hand raised, and we acknowledge that at that time. Um, mostly to be fair to everybody who is here and. Um, um, I, I look forward to, I'm, to hearing Mr. Lane's comments as we work together for a very long time on this board. So um, with, with that said, I would like to turn um, to now having actually um, the, the comments from the public. Um, as I've said, we're hoping to, uh, uh, the, the intent is we know there's probably a lot of folks who, who want to speak. If you're, um, uh, you know, there's there's two ways. If you if you actually came on to the webinar and the WebEx itself, you, there's a little um, down in the corner. You can raise your hand. I see that some folks have put a made a question mark by their name. I'm assuming that that's also for comments. You can also call in. Um, I'm I'm seeing uh, four or five actually hands raised on the folks who are on the WebEx. Um, Sharon, tell me if there are more. Um, and there may be more uh, in queue and the call uh, who are just calling the, the number. Again, that number, if you, um, I, I assume you have it, but if for some reason you need, you, you don't, um, or others don't, it's 629-255-1905, 629-255-1905. Um, and Sharon's gonna be managing the queue so I can be listening to the comments. Um, and uh, uh, once the, the board, once the comments have been submitted uh, and before we take any any formal action, we will also just have our time to have a conversation among us about um, various things, including um, Michael, what you raised about, about the Jackson law, um, which uh, given that that has been raised, I think um, Tara, I, once we get to the board piece, I'd love for you just to, uh, I'd appreciate it if you would um, just give a quick summary. So all the board members, now that it's been brought up, all the board members are aware of that and we're all have equal information um, on that point. So with that, um, I'm gonna, Sharon, I'm gonna turn over to you for, uh, for managing the public comments. All right, and as uh, mentioned, we will give everybody um, on this section of the public comments three minutes. At this time, we only have one person with their hand raised and that is Dr. Uh, Roderick Glant. Uh, we will be unmuting Dr. Glant here shortly, but just if you have, uh, I know that uh, Councilman Hall referenced um, Dan Lane, who served on the Solid Waste Board, and former Councilman Nick Leonardo. If you all want to speak, just please uh, go ahead and raise your hand. But we are going to start with uh, Dr. Roderick Plant. If we could go ahead and mute him. And your three minutes will be starting now, sir. No, Sharon, hang on one moment, please. I think yes. that there's some folks who may have put it in a question mark instead of a hand raise. So yeah, I'm going to... I'm going to interpret that as a as a hand raise. Okay, some of those were actually questions sent over to us. 
Okay, never mind. And Sorry. comments. Yeah, that there were some comments uh, that were made. So that's that's what those are. All right, Dr. Clement. Yeah. Thank you so much, uh, and to Chairman uh, Sherman, and to uh, the state representatives who are present, and to the panel, especially to the board. Um, thank you for the opportunity to weigh in on this. I just want to say in my three minutes that uh, I was reared uh, in Bordo Hills uh, on Mexico Drive, and uh, in the 70s and 80s can remember the smell uh, from the landfill. Uh, often what we would have to do is go in the house because the smell was too aggravating uh, to even have a cookout or to grill outside. Uh, so we moved. My mom uh, got to pack the bags and uh, we moved out of Bordeaux Hills primarily uh, for that very reason. Um, I've listened to the comments uh, and the presentations by Mr. Uh, uh, Gentle Core and and uh, take issue with uh, what he argued for to be consistency uh, and that he's recommending approval of the expansion. There are three things he said uh, as I come to a close. He said that the, that the landfill has high volume of waste, low recycling of waste, and no guidelines for handling C and D. Uh, and I just don't understand how you can have those three components be consistent with uh, marrying with the plan to expand. I'm asking the board, uh, please be compassionate and think about human beings who are living in that area who have to smell uh, this contamination. Uh, that means poison, pollutants, uh, and just aggravating smell, uh, please, I'm asking you, do not uh, pass for the expansion of this uh, measure. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, right. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, may I interrupt, please? This is Brenda Gilmore, and Mr. Lane said he's been trying to get in. He put in the chat that he would like to speak, but his uh -huh. he, can't, he needs to be unmuted. Yes, we will. We will unmute him. Let's go ahead and unmute uh, Mr. Lane, Dan Lane. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, sir, we can hear you. Okay, thank you, Sharon. John and Robert, thank you all also. Uh, I've had a problem trying to uh, get my audio working, but uh, anyway, I have, and I wrote into the question and answer, John, I have several questions and comments, so please unmute me. Um, one of the first comments I'd like to make, and I think the question was raised by uh, Jennifer. Uh, in 2004, uh, Waste Management came and asked to expand the landfill at that time. At that time, they also predicted and estimated that uh, it would uh, uh, be at capacity by 2018. The board said no. Waste management then appealed the board decision to the general session court. The board, as far as I knew, did not have any legal representation. The city didn't provide any legal representation. What little uh, legal representation that was available was that there was a group uh, called uh, Bardo Beautiful who tried to uh, engage an attorney to sit in, but there was no, no legal representation, so the uh, court appealed the decision. And now it's 2021. At that time, estimation was it was going to be at capacity at 2018. Now, I said this, if the board says no, Metro says no, prepare to go to court, and I would ask the board to contact the mayor and the legal department to ask them if they would provide legal representation, uh, because it's no question in my mind that waste management, and I think Don indicated he can't make the decision, is going to go to court if the boards do what the community is asking, and then Metro Council, if we say they come under the Jackson law, do what the community is asking, then waste management is going to take it to court and try to get another court decision. Because I think, now, first of all, 
I'm going to say I don't believe anything they said because I think uh, they are they are saying what they're saying to continue to expand the landfill. Now I live about a half a mile to three quarter of a mile from the entrance to the landfill, and in addition to the, the there's copper type odor, but there's a gas type of odor, and then there's other uh, uh, animal decay type odors. You can often see buzzards and things flying above the uh, uh, landfill from time to time. And the other problem is there's a negative impact on this community in terms of development. I'm a real estate broker and have promoted development in the area. And okay. the impact- Mr. Lane, mm -hmm. Mr. Lane your, your time's out. If you could just wrap up real quick. Okay, um, my, I, I'm gonna wrap up by saying this. Solid Waste Regional Board, Metro Council, stop dumping your everything on Bardo because it's a predominantly black community and all the other communities have fought to keep any type of uh, landfill out of there. And I think Bardo for the last 40, 50 years have shared this and it needs to go somewhere else, even if it has to go out of the county into some rural, other rural area. Thank you for getting, allowing me that opportunity. Thank you, Mr. Lane. We're now gonna unmute Gerilyn Sawyer. And Gerilyn, you got your three minutes. Hello, can you all me hear me now? Yes. Perfect. All right. Well, uh, thank you all for being here uh, and talking about this. I've lived in Nashville. I'm from New England. I've lived in Nashville now uh, for about seven years. Five of those years were on Eaton's Creek Road. And I loved this starter house that I bought there. It was a really wonderful way to integrate into a great community. But I will say you could not go outside without being assaulted by the scent of... I mean, we don't even know what it is, but I'm telling you right now, it is uh, nasty. <laughs> and so uh, driving to and from work every day on the highway, anyone who passes our exit knows there is something wrong over there. Um, so my husband and I uh, packed up, left that house and moved to Scottsboro. And we're in a beautiful community over here. And when the wind blows, <laughs> you still smell it. And so uh, I'm really concerned about how it's affecting our property value. I'm concerned about our health. And all in all, I'm concerned about corporate America stepping in, waste management, and doing absolutely anything that they want to do just for the purposes of profits. Um, we are not happy with that, and we will do everything in our power to ensure that it does not move forward. Thank you so much. You're unmute, you're muted, Sharon. Sorry, we're gonna unmute Tyrus McCain, my apologies. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, your three minutes have started. All right, um, I wanna just add to the potential of, of not just economic development uh, 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 that this would hinder, but the uh, natural, uh, the, the growth that's producing the debris is also displacing uh, African-Americans in, in Nashville because of the gentrification that's taking place. Um, you know, the existence of this landfill has uh, allowed us to be vulnerable to gentrification uh, because our home prices are depressed. We sit on uh, an acre to an acre and a half of land and our homes are selling for $350,000. Comparable properties, other places, sell for a neighborhood of six hundred dollars to uh, $700,000 for that type of property. So uh, setting us up, depreciating our, uh, our, our community and our values uh, and also uh, deterring economic development. Um, again, we have benefited from the growth and one another benefit is uh, Amazon has committed uh, $2 billion to three cities. So that's about $700 million that's possible for Nashville. And they have, uh, uh, Amazon has made 
it clear to us that they want to partner with the community to bring about innovative, big innovative uh, uh, opportunities, uh, housing, affordable housing opportunities. And across the street from uh, 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 um, this landfill is uh, uh, thousands of acres of undeveloped, undeveloped land that's primed to be developed uh, along uh, possibly with Amazon and saving uh, uh, the displacement of African Americans in this uh, city because of the growth. And I just hate that it would possibly be lost with this expansion of this landfill. So I just want to say it's a real economic uh, 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 cost to this to our community and not only with economics, it's the displacement of the people and the, uh, and the opportunity to uh, provide affordable housing for people like Jonathan and I, Councilman Hall and I, who grew up in that community, for our kids to be able to come back and, uh, and live in that community. That's all. Thank you, Mr. McCain. Now we're going to unmute Claire Branton. Uh, making a comment on behalf of uh, basically so social justice principles. Um, the Bordeaux community was cut off by I-40 in 1957, and now it's basically a fence line community and has been pretty much um, the, bearing the burden of our waste problems. And if uh, Southern Services owns that land, maybe they could go into the low cost housing business and get out of waste management, and then they would have an incentive to find some solutions for that odor. That's all. All right, thank you very much. And now we have a caller on the phone, and we're gonna go ahead and put that caller through, just one moment. It'll just be another moment here. Hello, caller. Please state your name, and you are now um, unmuted and ready to address the Solid Waste Board. You'll have three minutes. Yes, my name is Erica, and I'm at 4020 Drake French Road and also 4345 Princess Lane. And I wanted to revisit a question that was asked earlier regarding um, when the land would be safe for other use. Um, and the response was four or five years after the monitoring. And from my understanding, it could be as long as 30 to 40 years for the land um, to release any kind of toxins or um, just any gases that are coming out of the ground from this 30-year-plus landfill. So if this is correct, can we just get an honest answer for the community so they can understand that if this landfill does close in the allotted time, which is two to three years from now, that it can be another several generations before it has finished releasing gases, if ever, to where there can be the walking trails, I think that was mentioned by the responder, walking trails or anything else, because I don't know who would be able to get a good walk off um, the use of a landfill, walking on top of a landfill that is still releasing gases or toxins from the ground. So um, is that something that they can address? Uh, no, we, your comments will be provided, and uh, but this is a, a time for public comment. You cannot um, not a time to ask questions to the um, uh, to the the applicant waste management. Um, only the okay. uh, small waste board can ask some questions. But thank you okay. for your comments. So that was my that was my comment about uh, not the four to five years of monitoring that we would only need, but it could be up to thirty for 40 years um, where that land will be available for you safely. All right, thank you very much. We All right. have uh, one moment. Do we have anybody else on the line? Nobody else on the line. We have one more person here in the queue with their hand up. It will just give me one second here. We're gonna unmute. Uh, and I apologize if I mispronounce the name, but it's Cy Zawinski, uh, I'm sorry. Chris Zinowicz, thank you very much. So my name is Chris Zinkowitz, and I had a chance to read the plan 
one of the things that I really appreciated about the work that you all have done is that set of circles. You had an economic circle, a social circle, and an environmental circle. And you were saying that our plan needs to honor all three of those. So I want to speak in support of the community because that's our social circle and our, um, our, our part to care for them and honor what they have done and have had to put up with all these many, many decades. And it's past time. It is a social justice issue. It is a racial justice issue. It is an environmental justice issue. And in terms of the environment also, landfills have been a necessary evil, but they've been an evil. And as long as we kick the can down further, another two years, another 12 years, another, 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 will not stop them. The incentive of saying no at this point is something that will help everyone get on board to say we have to solve this problem in another way. And that's what I support. Follow the plan. Do the social and environmental aspects of this as well as the economic ones. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now we're going to unmute um, let's see here, Karen Wickert. I would like to uh, point out that the previous speaker is arguing about innovation and in particular social organizational regulatory innovation, not simply innovation about how best to recycle materials that we uh, create. And um, one of the reasons I've raised my hands is because I put out into the Q&A, uh, Sharon pointed out, Sharon Smith pointed out that after the uh, tornado, there was a request or a requirement to pile the different kinds of uh, debris and, and an innovation that we can imagine in Davidson County is for those piles to be regulated for any demolition or built buildings. That's an innovation that stops the, or helps reduce the amount of waste that goes in. So innovations aren't simply at the, uh, after you've made all this stuff, innovations can also happen before you make that stuff. Um, and I would say, and I just want to say as a person who is a, uh, citizen of Davidson County, that um, by not approving the extension, we can force kinds of innovations that aren't simply recycling innovations, but other kinds of innovations that uh, would make us all uh, deal with the debris that we're creating and actually reducing the amount. Thanks, Sharon. Thank you very much. And it appears Mr. Chair, that there is no one else with their hand raised and we have no more calls in the uh, queue. Um, Sharon, Wonderful. this is Robert Deal and we heard from Paul Slintz. He looks like he just dropped off. I think I think he just had a question, um, Robert. He didn't have a he didn't have his hand yes. raised for, uh, for comments. Um, so um, thank you, Sharon. I want to thank everybody who, uh, all the, the public who has commented and uh, helped uh, helping uh, inform the board more. Um, again, thank you for our uh, elected representatives uh, for um, providing more information. And of course, thank you for Southern Services and Waste Management to, to, um, to offer um, their, uh, you know, kind of why they think this landfill should be expanded. Um, with that, and before uh, board, it's now for, it's time for us just to have a conversation. Um, and I think uh, one thing I want to make sure before that happens um, um, is uh, 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 Tara Ladd is uh, is the uh, city attorney that uh, that works with us. And and um, given that uh, several individuals have raised the Jackson law, I just want to, I, I would like Tara just to give a brief explanation, clarify that, um, you know, it, it is not in our purview, that law. So just know that, but I think it would be helpful to you for everybody just to know, so we can kind of just close that up, button that piece up is have Tara 
Lad give a, a brief explanation of the Jackson Law and its application here in the city. Tara? Yep, Tara, you're unmuted. You should be okay. But we can't hear you if you're talking. Oh, well, oh. she's taking off her headset. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure what ITS Tara gave me. Well, um, as if, until while we're waiting for Tara. Um, Can you hear me now? Oh, oh, yeah, there you are. are. All right, I'm sorry, I apologize. Sometimes my laptop just decides it's gonna not work. Um, so we'll start with a brief overview of the Jackson Law, though I will say um, the chair is absolutely right that today, um, although the Jackson Law does sort of play a role in this piece, it's not, um, it shouldn't be on, on your mind as something that needs to be considered in your evaluation. So does the Jackson Law have something to do with this? Absolutely. Um, is it something that you need as a board to be concerning yourself with today? Absolutely not. Um, in fact, uh, any time that there is an expansion of a new landfill, um, the the law actually deals with that um, in two separate places. It deals with it uh, specifically in 68211814, which discusses specifically what you guys do as the Solid Waste Region Board, and your limited role there um, is simply to determine, is this expansion of the facility consistent with your 10-year plan? Uh, that's the 10-year plan that you approved earlier today and that you've heard, um, you know, members of the public speak about. So that, just st just stopping right there, that is the your only consideration today is, is it consistent with the 10-year plan? Is that expansion consistent? Um, touching a little bit on the Jackson Law or the local approval law, um, what that is, is that if the Jackson Law applies to the expansion of the landfill, and that, that is a legal determination that has to be made whether the Jackson Law applies, then in order for the landfill to expand, um, the, the Metropolitan Council must approve the expansion of the Jackson Law. Either way, it's going to come before the board. Um, we're just talking about two different steps that the, that the landfill expansion must take in order to get its approval. Now, let me just say this, um, with respect to the Jackson Law, uh, Metro Legal sent an official document uh, documentation to TDEC that we do believe that the Jackson Law does apply to this expansion. Um, however, having, having said that, let's, let's now put that aside. Um, because today your role is looking specifically at this uh, plan for expansion and seeing if it's consistent with your 10 year plan. And now what I want to do is is just really direct you to the law um, because the law is very specific on what your role is and what you must do. Um, so when you're making a motion, I want you to keep this in mind, whether you're approving or disapproving. Um, like every time I tell you, um, when you're making a motion, you need to articulate your reasons. So I'm going to read um, the applicable provisions of this law for the board uh, before you start your deliberations. Again, this is TCA section 68211814. Um, you can obviously approve the plan, and if you approve the plan, you would need to articulate why you're approving it or why you find that it's consistent. Um, but the law is very specific about what you must do if you believe you're going to reject the plan and find uh, reject excuse me reject the expansion and find it inconsistent with uh, your 10 year plan. Um, and I'm just going to read this to you guys just word for word so you know exactly what it says. It says the region may reject an application for a new solid waste disposal facility or an expansion within the region only upon determining that the application is inconsistent with the solid waste management plan adopted by the region and approved by the department, the department being TDEC, and the region shall document in writing the specific grounds in which the application is inconsistent with the plan. So 
if you intend to make a motion, which whichever way you plan on going after you have your deliberations, you need to make sure that when you make the motion that in your motion, you cite why or why not it is consistent or inconsistent, and you need to be very specific about your grounds for saying either. Um, if you have any questions once you get going on this, obviously I'm here to discuss further, um, but, but that's pretty much the gist of it, and the law is very pointed as, as to what you need to do. Wonderful. Thank you, Tara. That was that was very helpful. And um, I, you know, I uh, there is no reason for us to have any further conversation about the Jackson locks. I, we have it has nothing to do with our purview. So it's, I, I well, asked her to chair to chair right that. And I hate to interrupt, but at chair really quickly, I, I that brings a question for me for Tara um, in legal. Just a some, yeah, and, just a clarifying point, um, really quickly. The only reason, and again, we know that's not in your purview, not what should be considered. The only thing that I would ask is that being that, but how does that reconcile with, with the law once Jackson law has been implemented into the city? Because once it was voted on and brought in in 2017, both TDEC and the Solid Waste Board are supposed to be consistent with what the guidelines are in it. So how do we reconcile the decisions that are expected of them if they can't consider or know that it's it needs to be consistent with what's laid out in terms of terms in the Jackson law? Uh, Council Member Hall, I think I think I understand uh, where you're getting at in that if the Jackson law applies, it seems to make uh, sense that this this application um, should have gone before the council, perhaps before it went to the Solid Waste Region Board. Is that is that what I'm hearing? Correct, because according to what we voted on and passed, it gives that authority to the council. And, and to the local government. So once that took place, it's I understand the place for the solid race regional board. And again, we know that it does need to come before them. But I was just trying to reconcile the, the component of I know they're not supposed to consider things outside of the framework of the application at versus the plan, but still having the knowledge that ultimately the decision has been by passing Jackson law that it comes to Metro Council. Um, and I and and I, I don't I don't I, let me just preface by saying I don't really want to muddy the waters too far with respect to the limited role that the board has I get to play that. here. Um, Absolutely. But I will say historically what has happened when an application has been presented is that it goes to council before it does go to this board. Um, which if the Jackson law is applicable seems to be uh, more of a um, uh, more of a natural route for it to take. However, um, the law doesn't dictate which piece they have to do first. It just dictates that they have to do both. If the Jackson law applies, does that make sense? Uh, absolutely, absolutely. So, and just because it was full disclosure about what had been sent to TDEC, um, that again, I, I feel like is a, a mitigating factor that if this board is aware of those two things that one Metro legal has sent that letter and it'd be nice if it was read into the record, but also just the parameters un under which we are responding, um, both the community and myself as the council member. Um, and we can we can include the letter um, now that it's been mentioned. If thank you, um, we can include that in the record, Sharon. That's not a problem. Um, okay. And I and I understand your concerns. And you you and I both know that there's obviously legal implications that go beyond um, the board's purview here today. Um, Absolutely. So and, and I appreciate you, again you just clarifying for me and and not without entertaining too much because we yeah. know there are other steps that still need to be taking place so thank you of course thank you for uh thank you for that clarification um uh, councilman and I think the uh, uh 
So uh, again, not to muddy the waters and knowing that there's some, there, there's, this, there, there's this Jackson law out there and the board and the council has acted on it before a state, the city has submitted a letter about invoking it that has yet been voted on by council. And so there's that, it's still outstanding. Um, and you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I've talked to Sharon and Tara about this and, and it's like we, it's like we still need to, we have a responsibility and that is to look at this application and um, and determine um, if it's uh, if it abides by the plan or not. And so that's that's the conversation right now. So I'm going to open the floor up to the board to have the conversation. Just you know, this is just a, a conversation among us um, before we move or before we get to actually taking formal action. So um, the floor is open. Uh, John, this is Midori Lockett. Um, I reread the executive summary of the solid waste plan. And in section 9-4, we have a paragraph in there that says, uh, this plan does not include recommendations for any new or expanding landfills in Davidson County. Permitting new or expanding landfills would be inconsistent with the goals of the plan. So it seems to me as though we've outlined in the plan already our feelings about any expansions on the landfill. Those are my comments. I <laughs> think you've stated them already. So. Yeah, this, this is Robert <laughs> Deal. Or, this is Robert Deal. I'm sorry, Midori. I didn't mean to step on your no, toe. I, I was I was done, Robert. <laughs> the uh, even um, uh, waste management's um, expansion position paper mentions that very uh, section of the solid waste plan. I think that they will probably argue the point that the 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 use of the term would be inconsistent um, is is weak. What they're saying is the phrase would be is written in the future tense. And um, if if we can't stop it on that basis, then I would say that the that that section of the plan needs to be rewritten. This is Michael. I would uh, um, piggyback off of that and, and also say that, you know, that section begins with Metro Nashville aggressively working to reduce reliance on landfills. And I would question since we passed the waste management plan, um, the, the zero waste management plan, what has Metro done to aggressively reduce our reliance on landfills since then? Other comments? This is Dale Grimes. I, I would just, uh, I think I would just echo that. Um, I don't, I don't have the history that probably some of you uh, who've been on the board, and I'm, I'm new in the first, my first meeting, um, and it's, it's kind of a big one. And I, I really appreciate all the comments that have been made, and, 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 and sympathize. Um, but I do, I do wonder when it looks like that the that statement is conditioned on the city having aggressively pursued uh, these other things, which you know for for various you know good and and understandable reasons have not happened yet. Um, and I just wonder how you can say that this is inconsistent when that condition has not um, has not occurred. Thank you. I'm going to go back to the the whole intention and uh, clearly spelled out portion of the plan, which is that our goal is to get to zero waste. Um, and so zero means less. And to add a landfill would mean more. And so uh, I do not feel as though voting yes for this would help us to achieve our goals and the whole spirit of the plan that we worked on for several years. Demita, are you unmuting? Yeah, I was gonna say, I, I agree with Jennifer and, and talking about, we could use, or they, anybody could use the language to sway the plan in their favor, but it's not in the spirit of what the intention behind the plan is. And so I, I don't believe this aligns with what our path is forward. 
And if even if we haven't taken aggressive measures, we haven't defined what aggressive means. And so I don't I don't think this expansion aligns with with the spirit or the intention behind the zero waste plan. Uh, this is Robert Deal again, and um, unfortunately, first of all, my heart soared hearing Dan Lane's voice earlier. Um, he and John, of course, John was absent the last time that this landfill was expanded. Um, it did turn into a, a question of legalities, and I, I'm, I'm worried. Even though I would, I, I would do anything to stop this, and uh, I certainly cannot vote for it um, uh, for lots of reasons on many levels, including the social justice level uh, primarily. But um, um, I, I just want to know how the board, who is going to be responsible for writing the board's opinion as to uh, whether this expansion conforms with the uh, our solid waste plan. That's what's going to be in the motion, Robert. That that is that is what it's going to be outlined. And I'm I'm going to just jump in here because I have a I have um, pretty strong feelings about this. And setting aside, uh, I'm I'm just going setting aside all the reasons of, of, about Bordeaux or all the reasons about why we have to have actually landfill operators, which is because of total failure by federal and state government to actually pass policies that actually shoves this stuff upstream. And so we're all. All of us are having to spend our time dealing with the problem that is not our creation. So that's first of all. And when we, I mean, I, you know, there's there's a thing called legislative history, and we had these conversations for two years in development of this plan. We had numerous public hearings. We had six different meetings around the city to talk about this. And I don't think waste management showed up once. Not once. And so you so they there was an opportunity. I'm gonna be a little heated about this. There was an opportunity to weigh in on this. And in fact, waste management was part of Livable Nashville. And they were there and we agreed at Livable Nashville, which was a plan by the city and the previous two mayors, that um that we talked about zero waste there. Right. And so this was this is not a new conversation. So that's one thing, just legislatively. And within our board, when we talked about this. This was part of it. We know, and why did we even ask this plan? Because we saw recycling rates you, across the board, whether it was CND or whether it was municipal or whether it was, whether it was commercial, as flat. And we knew that we had to do something differently. And, um, and this may not have been that explicit in this, although I think it was, is that no one's going to move unless, unless they have to move. And our position on creating this this uh, this plan is you we are making it move. You're right. The city hasn't done a doggone thing. Now there's all sorts of reasons for that that are you know budgetary and all that. But bottom line is uh, a previous uh, board member who used to be a, a, on the city council no one pays attention to garbage until they have to. Well, our job in looking at this plan and developing a long term vision is to make people pay attention. And we we created a plan to do that. And the would be this is, I think that's just baloney. I think that we knew what we were doing and we voted on this and we had a conversation about it. So I don't buy the fact at all that somehow there is a there that, that we're I do not want to create any kind of language loophole here. We had an intention behind this. It was clear. You may disagree with me. So be it. But I think that we we were very intentional about what we wanted and creating a, putting a landfill in for another 12 or 15 years. When the last time this happened, there was a commitment then to do all sorts of stuff that didn't happen. And now here we are again. And and I can guarantee you in 10 years when this comes up again, there's going to be another reason why it's not happening unless it's forced. Unless we actually draw the line that we did in this plan saying city you have to step up and we can say it for all the reasons for the reasons for the community we can say it about so it's going to it's going to actually spur then waste management to think differently about what they're doing perhaps or certainly everybody upstream that's generating the waste and and then also you think about new markets for creating c and d but that's not going to happen unless we actually do what we said we wanted to do in this plan 
no new landfills, no expansion landfills. It's clear language. So um, you're hearing the you're hearing the chair getting a little heated about it, but I'm a I'm just I'm perplexed that we can do any, we could we could do any, we could do anything but deny this application. That's just my position. This is, is Michael and uh, you know John. I hear what you're saying, and and but my question then is you know why such the the you know why why should the board take a strong stance in the portion of not expanding the landfill, but we don't seem to be putting the pressure or, or uh, taking a strong stance on the increasing recycling, or aggressively increasing recycling. Additionally, throughout the plan and, and, and throughout the meetings, the one thing that is constantly comes up is funding. We don't have funding to do any of these programs. And, you know, by, by not expanding, we're, we're forcing the costs uh, of any kind of this waste, man, uh, this, this, you know, C and D disposal to go up. and you know, at some point, the city is going to burden some of that cost, and that cost is going to be deviated away from recycling programs. I mean, it's just the the the, the nature of, of how metro government is operating. Um, and so, uh, to, to to say, you know, it is completely against the plan, and it's op totally opposite uh, of what we wanted to do. Well, well, so is not aggressively doing any re recycling. We're not aggressively increasing the recycling plans, and maybe I, I miss I miss saw or you know I, I was picking a kid up from daycare, but uh, that the slide that uh, um, the report that we approved uh, showing the increases in uh, at the landfills and uh, the tonnage uh, that recycling went down from 2019 to 2020, and a year where more people were stuck at home and had more time to go through their garbage or aggressively implement. Recycling programs or attempt to recycle, we recycle the tonnage of recycling went down in 2020. We're not aggressively recycling in Davidson County, plain and simple. And, and I totally agree and with that. And, waste, I, and it's not waste management's job to do that. It's not their responsibility to make the city recycle. Well, just because we're not recycling doesn't mean we have to agree with expanding a landfill that already. Uh, burdens the whole entire community economically and uh, health-wise. Um, but within the purview of yeah. this board and the plan, the argument here is the plan says we can't expand landfills. Well, no, the plan says, it coupled with aggressive recycling, we can't expand landfills. So to sit here and say, well, we're only going to adhere to half of it, you know, it, it's picking and choosing. And, uh, you know, I, I know everyone's very passionate mm -hmm. about this and I, everyone has strong opinions. But, you know, so a lot, we ha as a board, we have to set aside the social justice opinions, the, the, the smell opinions. We have to set that aside and look at how does it apply to this waste management. Yeah, I don't plan to set that aside. I've literally had developers at, before I left the area because I used to live in the area too. And I moved and I've been in on some of these meetings where waste management never showed up and um, have talked to developers and they literally told me to my face, oh, we're not going to put any development out there. We're just going to build houses that, because they can get the land cheap. So I, I don't agree with it. And whatever a little, whatever, you know, I, do we have to quote the, the, any, um, the letter or the, the paragraph or whatever to say why we don't want to vote for it? Because I can find it, but I'm not voting for it. And I, I, I would just, I, uh, th this is a really interesting point and, um, about, um, you know, what comes first, the recycling, do we couple it with the, the, no, the landfill issue? And um, we know that, uh, you know, the, the conversation for me is that we have a responsibility. And the only thing that we have the legal authority over is up or down on whether landfill is expanded. Now we made all these other recommendations to the city and they have, we've been shown to the city and I can guarantee that the city, I mean, th this is a, you know, that my feeling is, is that, um, you know, they, they're going to kind of be herky jerky in terms of how they get started. But, you know, we knew before that they had two or three years left on the landfill. We were making a decision based on that. Right, and actually, what motivated part of motivated the plan is both the you know the 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 imminent closure as we thought at that time of, of Southern Services, and the fact that we know that what's happening down in Middle Point, 
And so we had we had this opportunity to, to actually move on this. And um, you know, we can educate, we can do all we can to move the council, but that's you know that's out of our purview. We can we can try. Hey, do it. We, that, that's what the plan was was intended to do too. Get everybody's attention. And um, and in this case, um, you know, the, the landfill came first. I don't think that's any reason for us not to, to, to vote on denying it because everything isn't going just as along the, this, this smoothly laid out you know, strategy, which we knew, I mean, anybody who does anything knows that what, what's on paper and how it actually unrolls is a little bit different, including this. You know, we thought that, you know, that there was going to be this uh, smoother transition. It's not gonna happen. We have to make a decision. And um, I'm not willing to make a decision about 12 more years of a landfill um, which is almost halfway through what we wanted as a plan. Um, and that, uh, you know, it's what we're saying is, okay, we've done our job city. Now you need to do your job. And, um, and, you know, quite frankly, you know, I, I'm taking this out of this. This is not, this is not anything personal about waste management. Um, we know that, you know, landfills are landfills and we've had them for a long time. And unfortunately, low income communities and all communities of color have often bared the brunt of that, whether it's urban or rural. That's not the issue for me in terms of this. It's uh, uh, whether, however, I feel about it personally. But as a, uh, as the board, is that you know we looked at the data, we knew we weren't going well, and we needed to do something differently. We we had an opportunity to do what we did in the purview of our responsibilities, and so that's all I'm asking the board to look at. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I, I'm, I'm very interested in, in your comments and, 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 and the way you've delivered them. As, as I said, I was not part of that planning process, and all I've done is, is been able to read uh, the plan, and, and so I, I, I feel at a disadvantage uh, in that respect, and, and, and I want to respect what the board intended uh, when they adopted the plan. But I do have a question, and that is, uh, what is the likelihood here? Is it that it's going to force the city to begin uh, setting policies and funding programs that have been recommended, or is the likelihood that this um, uh, C and D um, uh, garbage is just going to be shipped out to some other part of the state? Uh, I don't know if you're asking me that, but other folks may have an opinion, and it's going to be both. This, this is Robert, I'm sorry, John. No, please, Robert. Robert. Go ahead. Deal again. You know, when I brought up, if, if the expansion is not granted, are they prepared to do something else as they stated in their, in their proposal? And Jason Resper uh, mentioned the fact that whatever they could not recycle uh, could be commingled with other other uh, trash and, and be shipped somewhere else. Now, to me, I, I don't know whether that's a good answer or not, but at least what we're doing, if we deny the expansion, we're forcing these people to get creative and, and, and do something different uh, than what they've been doing up to this point. And because they're not recycling, uh, they're recycling only slightly more than 1% of the uh, of the entire entire C and D waste stream, when he admitted himself that sixty percent of what they get can be recycled. Chair, I know this may not be a perfect term, but the official scale on Mr. Hall, you're 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 breaking up. So, um, and if you pl please, I know you want to have a conversation, but really, this is the time for the board to have a conversation. So. Um, I, I, I would ask that you respect that this is the time for the board to share their comments, um, uh, sir. I think we may have lost and he was breaking up. Um, and uh, I was I, saying. Uh, okay, you're not. Beth, do you have a comment? I, I just want to echo most of what everyone else has said that you know, I agree to vote no on this. I don't, I was dismayed that waste management really didn't come up with any other options besides expansion. Uh, didn't seem to be willing to talk about anything else. And although I agree that 
that Nashville hasn't aggressively pursued um, any other actions. We've got this is a first step. It's not going to happen in all one big jump. I mean, if we if we push forward and make somebody else feel uncomfortable about having to pay increased tipping fees or drive farther to dump their waste, maybe they'll come up with some options or agree to to work with waste management or us on coming up with some options. But just allowing them to expand is not going to change anything, according to our plan anyway. So I, I agree with, with everybody on this panel that we don't need to just roll over and let them expand this landfill. Thank you, Beth. Other other comments? Um, well, Mr. Um, people that um, Mr. Chairman, this is Jeff McCormick. Uh, uh -huh. I echo a lot of what's saying that I agree this doesn't fit our plan. Kind of my argument would be the the part on the recycling and stuff that metro hasn't done yet well that doesn't really matter as far as whether it's in the plan or not because well we can't help that metro hasn't done it yet and i too feel like you know maybe this will make waste management start recycling more besides the one they're probably getting you know he admitted it's for green facilities which means they're paying more to have that recycled it's you know they're not just recycling everything is for people that's wanting green certification or something. So I'm sure they're charging them a higher rate to do that. Right, thank you. Mr. Chairman, I have one one other question and that is, is, is this the, the final um, forum for this or does it go to Metro Council after we speak on this or what what's the process? I, I don't really understand that either. So the process, as far as the board is concerned, is this is this is the opportunity now, um, and then and we will have we will have discharged our our duties uh, with regard to this to the Southern Services landfill application, um, whether we approve or deny, we're done. Um, and then uh, you know there's there's a whole other track that we have nothing to do with, and we have no particular you know say so other than just citizens, but not as representatives of the board, around how the city council will take up the issue around the Jackson law. But that's a separate track that has nothing to do with us. But our our duties are going to be done um, this evening. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah, I, I think so. I just I, what I didn't know is whether what we're doing is really a, a recommendation, or is this does this you know does this end it for waste management's expansion? So so um, if we deny it, then uh, uh, then it, and yes, then they still. I mean, there's still the Jackson Law piece, which is they have another shot there. But in term, but if our denial is our denial, and it, it doesn't go any further. And Tara or Sharon, if you if you have other information, but um, this is not a recommendation. This is this is a uh, basically a legal decision that we're making tonight. Yeah, the board's yeah. decision is final as to whether you know when you're making your determination as to whether the plan is consistent or inconsistent with the ten-year plan. Um, once you've reached the determination, um, it's going to be in writing because there's a stenographer there, and then from there, um, if the the uh, waste management would have an opportunity to appeal your decision, but that would be a going through a court, a uh, chancery court through a writ of cert. Um, so to answer your question, as far as is, is your role here today, what you vote on today is, is a final vote. Thank, thank you for that. And just to be clear um, that if it was appealed by 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 waste management, um, you know, to a, a court, the city would represent us. I mean, that would be, and um, they did before. Um, uh, just to clarify that point, that the city would would is is basically, could, you know, we have two different city attorneys on the call right now. That that you know, they would be the ones representing us, um, representing the board. Um, uh, yeah, we don't have to show up and do it ourselves. So, um, um, with that, I and, and uh, oh, Sharon, I mean Jennifer. Yeah, I just I just want to add that in addition to the proposal not fitting our plan in any way, 
The goal of getting to zero waste is so that we can not only be ethical neighbors to our own BIPOC community to whom we owe much, the very least of which is sticking to the plan, but also so that we are not burdening communities surrounding us with the same old problem, with the same old not working solutions. It's not working to continually go into other communities with landfills either. We want to see new, healthy, community positive solutions, which is why we wrote the plan and why we need to stick to it tonight. And, uh, just from a practical uh, perspective, I mean, eventually Mid East Nashville and West Nashville, they're going to run out of land. The only land left is that corner. That's it. So, and there's already development going crazy over there off of Brick Church. So, So um, as, as we're, uh, I think, moving towards some resolution on this, I would urge that um, uh, one of you consider what the motion would, would be and reflecting on what Tara had said. And I, I do, so given that, um, Tara, um, if, if this board were going to, and this is an if, I'm just asking for clarification, um, move to, um, to deny this application, and if we referenced those those phrases in you know those pieces in the plan um, on uh, pages eight dash two and pages nine dash four that talk about it, the the inconsistency of a, of a landfill with this plan is that sufficient or um, do you think we need more and is that fair to ask you? <laughs> I, I, I yeah I think that puts me in a perilous position. Um, I right. think I think when you're making your determination, remember that the statute um, is specific that you want to give specific grounds. Terry, do you want to talk? Sure, I can talk. Um, hang on. Oh, okay. I, I thought I thought I was like speaking over you. I wanted to make sure. Um, so Terry's on the line too. Um, the only thing I was going to say, and, and she might have something to add, is that I think not. You know, I think. Obviously, pointing to those sections in those particular places is great, um, but anything else that you have as well that you want to reference and other comments have been made that are outside of the documents, for instance, the um, just sort of the overall goal of the plan. Um, Terry, you want to say something? No, I, I, I really don't have anything to add to that. I think you put it very well. Um, yeah, no, just identifying the specific grounds, the ways in which it is inconsistent with the plan, um, so identifying specific plan components that you perceive as being, you know, inconsistent with what is proposed um, uh, appears to me to um, to meet that. Um, and um, like Tara said, there there is a stenographer um, uh, recording and writing um, the, the motion and, and um, the deliberation that you're undertaking right now. And um, uh, you know. At, at some point um, in future, I, I would imagine um, that you all will be asked to um, review and approve that as part of your review and approve of the, the meeting minutes from, from the, which you'll probably do at the next meeting. Great. Thank you, Terry. So um, just board members who, who don't know uh, Teresa Costanas or Terry, she, um, she was our previous attorney um, before Tara um, eagerly took her place. Um, so, uh, just know that that's, we're placing her. She's a, she's another attorney with the city. Um, with that, uh, are there more comments? All right. Well, um, uh, uh, I would, uh, the board, the chair would entertain a motion, um, for denial or approval of the, of the application. And with 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 requesting that whoever makes that motion, it has the same level of the detail that um, uh, was just outlined by uh, Tara and uh, Terry. I have a question. I was uh, serious about. Do we need to cite paragraph and uh, number or anything from the from the uh, plan? I would cite yeah. it if you have it on hand. I would I would point it out to the and make sure that you're citing. You know, you don't want to say 19A and not cite the page okay. number because this is all going to be transcribed, and you want a person who reads this to be able to go directly to where where you went. Okay, I got to go grab my. Thank you.
Any, anybody um, articulating one, or do you are you looking to the chair to uh, to, to make this happen? I'm I'm looking to one of you to, to start it if possible. Mr. Chairman, what if we kind of uh, just mentioned and somebody kind of scribble them down the re different reasons it doesn't make the plan, so someone could maybe articulate the motion a little better. That's a great idea, Jeff. Um, so uh, why don't I just start? And I, um, I'm actually, if you see me looking down, I'm actually looking at the plan. So there are two different places in the plan that 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 says uh, permitting new or expanding landfills would be inconsistent with the goals of the plan. And um, so that's it's been mentioned. It's on in, on page eight dash two, which we don't need to worry about, as as, as uh, Tara said. And again on on pages nine dash four. So there's two different places where that very specific language is in there. Permitting new or expanding landfills would be inconsistent with the goals of the plan. So that's one. Um, others? That was the easy one. The, the comment the man made, and I don't even remember who it was, about the social part of the circles in our plan, is there uh -huh. a way to address that one too? Um, well, uh, somebody wants to find that section and, and give me some, give us some specific language, um, that would, that would, that would tie to that. That'd be, that'd be helpful. I don't have that in front of me right now. I, I, I believe it's, uh, Sharon, if you could help me, it's in one of the, one of the appendices in particular. Um, and I was, I'm not hundred percent sure. First of all, it's, it's not nine dash four it's actually i it's in the appendix so it's eight dash two and i as an indigo dash four but when you say the circles are you talking about the triple bottom line yes the triple bottom line is in section 10. yes okay actually sharon it is it is mentioned twice at least in the in the, in, in the on the on the page numbers that I have. Oh, okay. My, my yeah. apologies. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. If, I, if folks want to look at Section Ten, if there's something, uh, some language in there um, that would that would make sense. Um, I do think. I mean, while while someone's looking at that, I think that that's um, the the that I'm not sure who said it, but you know, this is a zero waste plan, and so. Um, the idea is, you know, the intention, our intention with this plan is to, is to move towards zero waste. And we don't, uh, and, and, and the, the, having a 12 year, you know, a 12 to 15 year expansion of a landfill um, is counter, and this, this is another way to say is counter to, to the idea of, of, of moving towards zero waste. Isn't our plan to move towards zero waste over the course of 20 years? Yes, it is. So then wouldn't it be being expanded for 10 to 15 years mean that it would be closed or, or um, not permitted to be used anymore before we hit the 20 year mark? That's assuming that the 10 to 15 year, uh, the 12 to 15 year plan works um, is, is, you know, we, I can't well, predict the future. Wouldn't, wouldn't, yeah, but when wouldn't that it come up before the board again? For another expansion to which then that at that expansion point you would say well no our plan is to get to zero waste within 20 years and an expansion beyond 20 years does not do that that's um if in fact if in fact it was all that stop start but i think i think um, i for i don't see how that how it by allowing a landfill now creates any opportunity to do anything except landfilling and I don't, and I, and the, the idea, which we have, you know, this board has experience. This board put out a 65% reduction in the previous plan. We never, and it never got touched. And the reason why? Cheap landfilling. And we knew that. And it doesn't matter what all the, what we all say. Um, again, I'm just getting back to the, I'm getting back to my, some of the rhetoric on this, but the point is, 
Um, if, it, you know, if everybody, if, if the world was, you know, moving in some kind of lockstep and we could, you know, see that happening, then, you know, Mike, uh, Michael, I may, I may go, yeah, that, that makes sense. I just don't, I just don't believe, and I don't think the history of, of this board and seeing what's happened over the last 20 years, um, you know, that, that, that doesn't play out that way. So there's a history here of it not playing out that way, but, but I don't, I, see guess what, I don't see what's going to change the history. I guess that, yeah. that that just seems counter to then the question of does this fall within the plan? It seems more like that that course of argument is not does it fall within this plan, but how can we force this plan to make sure it works because the last one didn't? Um, our job, well, yeah. So there's your point well taken, but it's a point. So um, this is Robert. Let's just call it by any means necessary. Um, I have the plan in hand, which is literally called the zero waste plan. Um, section five refers to research and screening of diversion strategies. And if we found, a, um, if we, we've already discovered this, uh, they've already admitted that they don't have any other plan. They don't do any research. They don't have any other strategy to deal with the, um, with the current solid waste that is, um, inert materials that won't dissolve, then they, and they don't have one for this additional 77 acres. Could we find something in that section that would address it as well? Yeah. Including, uh, and then in section eight, there's a materials management and infrastructure section. And mm -hmm. uh, section 10 refers to the triple bottom line. And that's typically, that typically includes the, the um, uh, social impact. Well, it's, I'm looking for language, very specific language, or um, we're, we're getting to the point where we need to articulate what goes in the, in, into a motion. Um, right now I have, we have specific language about that the plan speaks to um, the permitting new or expanding landfills would be inconsistent with the plan. Um, with the plan's goals. Um, if there's, uh, you know, and, and that, I mean, uh, that, that feels pretty front and center for me. And that, uh, that kind of behind that is the, is somewhat, I would say the, the, the looser language, but it captures the intent of of, the, of what of a zero waste plan. That okay. uh, this is our idea, and um, uh, that in, in order for us to actually to move forward, we we need to implement the plan, and so this is part of the implementation. The part that we control. Correct. Uh, oh, correct. Because this this gets to step four. This is actually step four of our of implementing this plan. Robert, one thing um, in section seven, uh, there is a table: Metro Council policies years two to four, uh, stra strategy goal to promote diversion from landfilling and material generated on Metro contract construction sites. Never mind, that's Metro contracted. Sorry, should have read it third. Well, and I think that, um, yeah. So I think this, there's a conversation about, you know, this was, this was laid out in a way that we were, how we saw things moving forward, given the circumstances at the time. Um, those circumstances have changed a bit. And that, um, so I'm, I'm more wedded to the, to the zero waste and the, and the different pieces that need to happen, um, meaning we need an ordinance, you know, we need to have the deposit system, we need to have, um, you know, uh, the, the CND transfer station, we know we need to have these different pieces. Um, we as a community, uh, and I just want to make sure that we set aside what we as a community have responsibility for and what we as a board have responsibility for. And, um, I, I just bring it back to that point. And so I think we made that. So um, 
you know, I'm uh, I'm still, uh, you know, I'm, I, I don't know, if Jennifer, if anybody's, you know, or any of you are like, you know, putting down the exact motion right now. Um, well, can that, I drop a draft of all the things that have been said so far into the Q&A for us to be able to look at? Yeah. Are you asking me or did you just do that? No, I, I mean, I've done it, but I haven't hit send because I'm waiting for permission from somebody that that's an okay thing to do. Send. Oh. Tara, Tara, could you weigh in? Um, Terry, what do you think about that? Is that safe it's, somehow? It, it's a very interesting question, actually, because um, there is a prohibition in the Open Meetings Act on electronic deliberation. Um, <laughs> well, we're not deliberating, we're just reading it. Oh, but obviously, we are. Can she share her screen then instead of, because I kind of think emailing it to us would violate public records law. Why don't you just call it out? Or it, could be, it could be public record. Yeah, just call, go ahead and call it out. I'll just I'm, call it out. Maybe do both. <laughs> um, I can, that I way, can share uh, my screen and, and talk at the same time. Well, I was thinking, can't, isn't the Q&A function on this that that's a public function i'm seeing yeah. q a from from the public so is it, it is. any different yeah. it, it is certainly a public record i don't know to what extent it is um retained um beyond oh the i see meeting. um I see. but um i mean i'm sure like anyone who wanted to see it could like take a screenshot and preserve it that way um and perhaps sharon <laughs> could do that for us as well um but um, uh, I, I just um, think um, okay. oh. it's a little bit, it's kind of ambiguous because we are already operating under the governor's executive order because normally we can't even meet electronically in the way that we are currently right now. So, um, you know, they, they didn't envision us meeting in any way other than in person when they wrote the statute. And so, um, meeting um, in a, a video conference format that has a chat feature is just not something that's contemplated in the open meetings act at all. And the governor's executive order, while specifically allowing us to do this kind of meeting, doesn't really address the chat function feature. Um, so um, it is it is hard to say, but I, I would say as long as you also read it out loud um, and so that and the, the public who are um, the public who are on the meeting as um, attendees should be able to see the Q and A as as they participate, and also the um, uh, the the members of the public who are participating by calling in would not be able to. But if if they were listening, um, they could hear it read out loud. Um, so I'm thinking if you do both, mm -hmm. that would be right. the problem. Let's do both. I'm going to drop it in in three sections because it gives me a character limit. That's right. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Actually, do you mind sharing your screen because that way we could actually capture it, uh, yes. whereas I can't capture the um, the message. Yes. Can I get the power to be a screen share? I am working on that right now. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, while they're doing that, would it would one statement be possible that, and I think it starts in Appendix F where we're getting to the goals of the zero waste plan. No mm -hmm. way. Nowhere in the goals to get to zero waste is it mentioned to expand the landfill? Sure, that's another point, right? Good point. Jennifer, you should be good to go. Okay. Um, While she's sharing, and section five with the research and screening of diversion strategies, um, there, we, uh, there, there, in the study, there's a list of materials that were prioritized to be diverted and one of and because of the greenhouse gases that they produce and those materials are clearly stated as c and d and that's on the first page of section five and having a landfill to increase c and d would act would would definitely go against the priority of diverting those things
So, um, uh, uh, Jeff, I want to get back to your point. This is really great, um, Jennifer. I, uh, this is that uh, you're capturing this. Um, sure. The uh, 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 and uh, Jeff, you mentioned that in Appendix F. Just going back to that. Uh, that in there, it, it, can you articulate, say that again? I don't have the appendix well, up in front of me right now. In, in the goals of the plan of getting to zero waste, I don't see anywhere that it's ever mentioned to expand the landfill. That was never mentioned as a goal of the plan or anything. So, but do we want to go with um, concrete things it says rather than things that it doesn't say? You want to go with what will hold up in court, so they're going to look at our plan and tear it apart. Yeah, and I would say, again, getting back to their own position paper, that when they mentioned that one section about expanding landfills would be inconsistent, blah, 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 that's the one place that they feel like, um, you know, we can approve based on that. They will argue that language in court, my opinion. The position paper of waste management indicates what, Robert? Uh, Jennifer, it's on page uh, 12 of 13. So I, um, my, uh, I'm doing it electronically. My document is, so I oh. can't do both the screen sharing and the looking at the document at the same well, time. <laughs> they, their, their position paper that they submitted says, further, the plan language says that, quote, expanding landfills would be inconsistent in bold with the goals of the plan, unquote. The phrase would be is written in the future tense. The only way the future tense language makes sense is to tie that language back to the assumption made in the preceding sentence, which states that Metro is aggressively working to reduce reliance on landfills. Mm -hmm. So that's that's what they're going to that's what they're going to argue. I would come back to that and use that section five. Um, however, uh, preceding the future tense of that statement is the fact that we had to research and outline uh, materials that would be diverted. And what those materials include C and D. So um, even, even if there's a future tense to this expansion or if we're adding landfills, we outlined those particular items before that, that, we, that we wanted those diverted. And for that to start as soon as we implemented the plan, Lisa, I agree with you wholeheartedly. I think it could be argued that the only reason, the reason why we use that type of language is because there was no expansion before us at that moment in time. Exactly. And we foresaw that possibility and, and determined that it would be inconsistent with the plan. Exactly. And then just, and, and if they did get that specific about the contents of the landfill, then we have, we, we foresaw <laughs> that uh, that waste, somebody like a waste manager or that considering the development of the middle Tennessee and the, ex the explosive growth that there would be a need. So we had to identify items that could be diverted. Oh, I found the triple bottom line section two in section 10. Um, that is mm -hmm. in, that that their expansion is inconsistent with the triple bottom line uh, reference um, in, in our in our plan because the triple bottom line clearly um, speaks to economic, environmental, and social impact, and the expansion really it uh, it um, affects all three economically. Developers have already said they're not going to put any shopping malls out there. They're not going to put a grocery store out there, and then socially. Uh, families aren't moving back, and then environmentally, it's uh, causing um, it to causing that area, one of the zip codes in that area, to have the highest rate of asthma for uh, children in the whole state. Thank you, Jennifer. <laughs> yes. 
Should I read this out <laughs> loud yet to give the public an idea who is listening in on the phone? Yes, what we're yes please with? do. Yep, yep, so yep, at the so. moment, we're working with a draft that says someone will make a motion to deny the application because the plan outlines clearly that permitting new or existing landfills would be inconsistent with the goals of the plan as outlined on page 8-2 and 9-4, as well as in I. The position okay, paper was... I-4. I-4. And we just say, and as outlined in the zero salad in, in the plan. Well, I guess we talked about, we, I think we, we ought to just make sure we're talking about the plan. So cat, uppercase, but I'm interrupting you, Sharon. I mean, Jennifer, keep on going. We'll, we'll uppercase I, is that what you mean? And P, because that's a, the plan is, a, it's a formal document. And like making a capital C for church here. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, the position paper of waste management indicates, quote, existing landfills would be inconsistent with the goals of the plan, after which they argue the tense of the language, which is inconsistent with the spirit of the plan. There was no expansion at that moment, the plan at the moment that the plan was written. And approved. Period. The plan. was written with that language in order to prevent just such, just this kind of expansion request. Section five refers to research and diversion strategies and the presentation today did not show us any other strategies to deal with the current solid waste that has inert materials that won't dissolve. Having a landfill to increase construction and demolition, C and D, would go against the priority of diverting C and D as outlined in this section. With regard to the triple bottom line found in section 10 on page 12, the social impact is part of the plan and has been clearly articulated as inconsistent during the public comment period of the meeting held March 24th, 2021, as well as many previous meetings that were cited during the public comment period. Health concerns, livability, home resale value were all mentioned. The plan itself is called the zero waste plan and this plan does not move and this proposal does not move us toward that goal. And uh, Jennifer, probably in that uh, to have where you had the, the second paragraph, the last sentence, the plan was written with that in with that language in order to prevent just this kind of expansion request as evidenced by section five. And then section five refers to research and et cetera, et cetera. And then in the, the last full paragraph, uh, the last sentence, um, at, use the words that we use in the, the plan um, that those concerns directly address it. Those are environmental and economic concerns. Uh, Jennifer, I still think you can add a sentence that says the, in the goals mentioned to obtaining zero waste in the plan, nowhere was it mentioned the expansion or addition of new landfills. Right. Nowhere in the plan, what? Tell me one more time, Jeff. In the goals of the plan to achieve zero waste. Okay. And the goal that it doesn't account that the plan doesn't account for or provide for expansion, uh, new new uh, landfills and expansion of old ones or whatever. What do you think? What do you think, Jeff? Either way, it's fine with me. It just wasn't in the goals anywhere. Okay, so the goals of the plan do not provide for. The addition, the addition or expansion of landfills.
How's that? Oh, sorry, public. Uh, public, we changed the last paragraph to say the plan itself is called the Zero Waste Plan, and this proposal does not move us toward that goal. The goals of the plan do not provide for the addition or expansion of landfills. To approve this proposal would contradict the plan both in spirit and in letter. I have to, to throw out there that uh, we continually throughout this motion use zero waste and move towards that goal, but we don't actually specify that zero waste is 90% diversion, not 100%, and that, that zero waste plan does include landfills. If you're going to 90, where's that other 10% going to go? It's got to go to a landfill. So I'm just, you know, we keep saying towards that goal of zero. I think somewhere in that motion, I think it's necessary then for it to say, that zero waste defined as a 90% diversion from landfills. Well, I still argue that I, it didn't mention it's, yes, you would use landfills, but it did, still didn't, we didn't add or expand any existing landfills. Exactly. So I'm just the typist. Tell me oh. what, if we want to include that language or if we don't feel good about it, how should we move from here? I would say no, and then just refer, you know, refer people to an electronic or a hard copy of the plan. Because if, if you know, if, if we're saying zero waste, then we come back and say zero equals 90%. That's not going to look, um, I mean, I don't, I don't know. That's, I don't know. I mean, because I, I totally get it. I totally get it. What you're saying about the, where's the other 10% going to come from? Uh, but like Jeff is saying, you know, we, we're not saying no landfills, no landfills, we're just not saying no new ones and no expansion of, of existing ones. Well, I think, I think yeah, that's a good point, um, Lisa. And I think that it's um, this, this point about zero waste, we, we, that has been talked about a lot in the plan and we talked a lot in the, in the thing and in the, during the, all the public hearings and, it's about the residual. It doesn't, and we're not saying is a residual of C and D is a residual municipal. We're just saying residual. So I would prefer not to have it in here myself. I agree, John. I, I think that what it, what Jennifer has added at the uh, at the bottom uh, should suffice. Because if anybody has any questions about any of this, they can go themselves and and uh, via the link. And so for the public, I've added the plan is publicly posted and can be seen at <laughs> this link, which um, I guess maybe I should read out. Oh, my God. HTTPS colon backslash backslash www.national.gov backslash portal slash O or zero? Go with a, what zero. That's one zero. Of <laughs> Site zero. content. Zero slash site content slash PW slash doc slash recycle slash master plan slash SWMP percentage two zero ES underscore final dot PDF. Thank you, Jennifer. I mean, so, yeah. Are we good with this or do we need to make commas like help I me with the grammar here? Oh, yeah, this I comma should be over here. <laughs> Okay. And I think that we have to, we have to, I, it would it'd be something I, along the lines of two is that, um, um, you know, to, you know, that whoever makes a motion to deny the application of the Southern Services um, uh, landfill um, uh, from waste management, um, you know, so just getting that language in there. Um, uh, also, Jennifer, the first time you mentioned the plan in the first paragraph, you might say the Metro uh, Solid Waste Master Plan. Mm -hmm. Metropolitan Nashville and, David, Nashville and Davidson County Solid Waste Master Plan, colon, achieving zero waste. <laughs> <laughs> What's it called? <laughs> The Metropolitan and Davidson Nashville County. and Davidson County. Metropolitan Nashville and Davidson County. Yeah. Yeah. Solid waste master plan. I wouldn't go. Well, it's, it's go part of the title of it. I'm just looking. I'm looking at the title that we adopt. Title. Yeah. What's, the, what, what's after the colon? Achieving zero waste. Achieving zero waste. Oh, 
it's mostly just being really clear about what what we're talking about here and that's that's uppercase the waist the, too yeah w was uppercase okay. i was just trying to minimize it I know. <laughs> as a, as a you problem. Can hyperlink it. <laughs> <laughs> i can hyperlink it i'm only kidding I'm oh. just, I'm, I'm, I, I know i'm getting a little slappy here it's 7 30 we've, we've been at it for a while yeah. You might uh, italicize. You might italicize the title of the plan too. Yeah, or put some quotation marks around it or something. Yeah. How's that? Well, you you've got uh, waste management. You want to you want to start that with the Metro Nashville. <laughs> I sure did. Let me yeah. un unlive link that. <laughs> hmm. How do I do that? Nope, that's not it. Whoop. <laughs> The check, the, the chain, the X through the chain is undo. Oh, I think so. Highlight it again. There you go. I think nice. the ace. Yeah. <laughs> because yeah. all right, so I got to grab the link again. Boy, if the public is still listening, I apologize for how boring this is. Bear with us. This it's is this is. There is a lag, and so I'm having trouble keeping up with who's talking because I don't know your voices that well. And so by the time I know who you are, you've already said about two sentences. So will you keep that in mind, please? It's making it difficult. Sure. Should we go back to announcing uh, who's speaking, or are we about done? Yes. Uh, and so, uh, uh, Marta, this is John Sherman, and I believe we are... Um, we are we are uh, done. I, I think um, I, I think that we might want to. Um, now I don't know if we need to actually assert uh, the, the the state code in here. Tara, do we need to put something about reference to state code on this? No. no? Okay. Um, one one more thing, Jennifer. In the in the last paragraph. Um, the plan itself is called the zero waste plan. I mean, I would be consistent making that achieving zero waste or I don't know, you could capitalize the W and the P in waste and plan. Either that or you just put plan in parentheses after the first time we title it in the first paragraph. And just after that, we just, okay, you got it, good. Yep. And I'm sorry, that was Robert Deal. Okay. This is Jennifer. This, this is Dale Grimes. Do you need in the first sentence there, the first line to say the application of the Southern Services Landfill for an expansion, what the application was for to expand the landfill, something like that? Yeah. Do we need to name the landfill? This is Jennifer. We did. It's Southern Services Landfill. Oh, okay. This is John. Tell me when you're ready for me to read it aloud. This is Jennifer, sorry. Um, or if it's time to read it aloud by making the motion. I think it's time to actually make a motion. And I'm, uh, I'm uh, I don't know. Jennifer, since uh, since you've been the author of this, would you like to make the motion? <laughs> um, this is Jennifer Hackett, and I would like to make it clear that we have collectively authored this document. Um, I have <laughs> gladly offered my public service of my fingers and my uh, my own brain power, but this is definitely a team effort, and I'm grateful for all of you. Um, I would love to make the motion. Please do. I make the motion to deny the application of the Southern Services Landfill from Waste Management for an expansion of their existing landfill because the Metropolitan Nashville and Davidson County Solid Waste Plan Achieving Zero Waste outlines clearly that permitting new or existing landfills would be inconsistent with the goals of the plan as outlined on page 8-2 and 9-4, as well as I-4 within the plan. The position paper of waste management indicates expanding landfills would be inconsistent with the goals of the plan, after which they argue the tense of the language, which is inconsistent with the spirit of the plan. There was no expansion at that moment the plan was written and approved. The plan was written with that tense language in order to prevent just this kind of expansion request as evidenced by section five. 
Section five refers to research and diversion strategies, and the presentation today did not show us any other strategies to deal with the current solid waste that has inert materials that won't dissolve. Having a landfill to increase construction and demolition, CND, would go against the priority of diverting CND as outlined in this section. With regard to the triple bottom line found in section 10 on page 12, the social impact is part of the plan and has been clearly articulated as inconsistent during the public comment period of the meeting held on March 24, 2021, as well as many previous meetings that were cited during the public comment period. Health concerns, livability, home resale value were all mentioned. Those concerns are also environmental and economic as well as social, which are all outlined in the plan. The plan itself is called the Achieving Zero Waste Plan. And this proposal does not move us toward the goal of achieving zero waste. The goals of the plan do not provide for the addition or expansion of landfills. To approve this proposal would contradict the plan both in spirit and in letter. The plan is publicly, publicly posted and can be seen at this link. Should I say the link all over again? Um. I wouldn't. Okay. That was Robert. Okay. I agree. I mean, we we mentioned it twice already. It's it's publicly posted. Um, okay. So there was a, there was. Hold, hold, um, uh, I'm looking for a second. We have, there's a motion on the on the floor. We need a second, and then we can go in and do some conversation. Okay. Uh, be before we do that, though, this is me, Dory. There's a little bit of clarity issue in the fourth paragraph. With regard to okay. the bottom line, sec, uh, found in section 10 on page 12, the social impact is part of the plan and has been clearly articulated as, as inconsistent during the public comment. We're talking about the plan has been inconsistent or their position paper has been inconsistent. They're, they're expanding the, the expansion is um, inconsistent. inconsistent. Okay, we need to state that then because it's not clear. When you okay. Okay. So, um, so uh, Jennifer, as maker of the motion, um, are you willing to make that change? I am. If if um, if I can figure out where what words to put where. <laughs> okay. Is that Midori? Yes. Yeah. Could you uh, point out? This, yes. With regard to the student plan, uh, the social impact is part of the plan, and the expansion of the of their the southern whatever. Services landfill mm -hmm. has been clearly articulated as inconsistent. Inconsistent with the plan during during the public comment period of the meeting. Right. I was so, just wondering if we needed a with here. Okay. The post mm -hmm. expansion. No. It makes sense. I would say with the plan, just to be sure. There's no. Yes. There's, if we want to be redundant. And there's no reason not to be redundant. Yes, uh, this is this is Robert. But should we say the social impact of landfill expansion is right. part of the part of the plan? Um, wait a minute. Let's go back. The potential social impact of landfill expansion, maybe. Right. The 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 expansion and expansion or an expansion of the landfill. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh -huh. I would say instead of the potential, I would say an expansion okay. of, a, of a landfill. Uh huh. Okay. Is an, an expansion of a of the landfill is uh, is clearly is inconsistent with the plan as clearly indicate articulated at public meetings, et cetera, et cetera. The plan. Maybe we and, need a period. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, I think maybe that, okay. And take that part out all the way up to has been clearly articulated as consistent. I'm sorry, sorry. Yeah. tell me which words to take out because you know. Uh, expansion of the Southern Services Landfill. Mm-hmm. Take that, out those words. That, yeah. Yeah. That. And then keep going. Yeah. There. Okay. There you go. 
plan has been clearly articulated as inconsistent in the plan during the public comment period of the meeting held. Does that flow now? I'm, I'm still confused by the first by the first the first clause. The social impact of an expansion of the landfill is inconsistent with the plan. Has been clearly articulated. Um, yeah, takeout is is inconsistent with the plan. The first one, right? Right. There you go. First one. Yeah. Right. Or even just say take out the plan because it's been articulated. Mm -hmm. Right. The special aspect of an expansion of the land. Negative. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. The negative social impact of an expansion. The clear okay. articulation. Okay, okay. And then, um, is there anything else? Just looking it over one more time. Uh, the last, um, the last paragraph of that. I mean, the last sentence of that paragraph. They should say, therefore, the concerns are all are. The concerns are environmental, economic, and social. The concerns are environmental, economic, and social impact. Which are all outlined in the plan, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. Um, since, since we have, since we have um, worked this, uh, um, uh, let's take one more shot of this, make sure everybody feels clear so when, when we re-articulate, restate the motion to be clear. Um, for uh, then, uh, then we'll 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 be done. So I just want to make sure if there's anything else that we see as um, needing further could, clarification. Could I ask one question? This is Robert Deal again. In the first paragraph, it says page pages eight two and nine four. Is that not section eight dash two and nine dash four? It is. It pages. It is? Mm -hmm. That section yeah, or chapter. I don't know what they call it here. They call them sections. You're right, Robert. Yeah. Uh, and one more thing, Jennifer. You've yeah. got a double you got a double space in the in the lower paragraph before uh, to approve this proposal would con contradict the plan. You might want to cut out one of those spaces. And do. Am I and sending this somewhere to someone? I think this is going to be captured first by this will be captured by um, the stenographer and um, um, so that's that's the official record so we just need to say repeat the motion okay. um, and I would make sure that every before you do that everybody read it through one more time um, and then uh, to see if there's anything else you want changed before Jennifer um, uh, restates her motion. I'm sorry, I have one more thing. Sure. Um, at the, in that last paragraph, that last uh, sentence of that fourth paragraph again, uh, therefore the concerns are environmental, economic, and social, which are all outlined in the plan. Right. Uh, do you want me to say and instead of as well as? Correct, yes. Okay. Got it. Okay, thank you. For one more thing in, the, in that first paragraph is outlined in section 8-2 and 9-4. Is that of on it? <laughs> mm -hmm. um, do I need to say this part more clearly? The plan was written with that tense language. Sounds clunky. Does. Maybe with language in that tense. Well, no, then you've got two ends right together. Mm. With just that, forget the tense, just with that language. There you go. And that was Robert Deal. How about as there was no expansion? Okay. Yeah, I, I'm. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, everybody okay? All right, Jennifer, <laughs> please re restate your motion. I will. Uh, yeah. 
Uh, this is Jennifer Hackett. I make a motion to deny the application of the Southern Services Landfill from Waste Management for an expansion of their existing landfill because the Metropolitan Nashville and Davidson County Solid Waste Plan, colon, achieving zero waste, outlines clearly that permitting new or existing landfills would be inconsistent with the goals of the plan as outlined in Section 8-2 and 9-4, as well as I-4 within the plan. The position paper of waste management indicates, quote, expanding landfills would be inconsistent with the goals of the plan, after which they argue the tense of the language, which is inconsistent with the spirit of the plan. As there was no expansion at that moment, the plan was written and approved. The plan was written with that language in order to prevent just this kind of expansion request as evidenced by section five. Section five refers to research and diversion strategies and the presentation today did not show us any other strategies to deal with the current solid waste that has inert materials that won't dissolve. Having a landfill to increase construction and demolition, CND, would go against the priority of diverting CND as outlined in this section. With regard to the triple bottom line, hold up y'all. <laughs> this is, we have to say the word waste. We can't, just, we can't just say construction and demolition. From the top and a little faster, I make a motion to deny the application of the Southern Services Landfill from Waste Management for an expansion of their existing landfill because the Metropolitan Nashville and Davidson County Solid Waste Plan Achieving Zero Waste outlines clearly that permitting new or existing landfills would be inconsistent with the goals of the plan as outlined in Section 8-2 and 9-4, as well as I-4 within the plan. The position paper of waste management indicates, quote, expanding landfills would be inconsistent with the goals of the plan, end quote, after which they argue the tense of the language, which is inconsistent with the spirit of the plan. <clears throat> As there was no expansion at that moment, the plan was written and approved. The plan was written with that language in order to prevent just this kind of expansion request as evidenced by section five. Section five refers to research and diversion strategies, and the presentation today did not show us any other strategies to deal with the current solid waste that has inert materials that won't dissolve. Having a landfill to increase construction and demolition waste, CND, would go against the priority of diverting CND as outlined in this section. With regard to the triple bottom line found in section 10 on page 12, the negative social impact of an expansion of the landfill has been clearly articulated as inconsistent in the plan during the public comment period of the meeting held March 24th, 2021, as well as many previous meetings that were cited during the public comment period. Health concerns, livability, home resale value were all mentioned. Therefore, the concerns are environmental, economic, and social, which are all outlined in the plan. The plan itself is called Achieving Zero, the Achieving Zero Waste Plan. And this proposal does not move us toward the goal, that goal of achieving zero waste. The goals of the plan do not provide for the addition or expansion of landfills. To approve this proposal would contradict the plan both in spirit and in letter. The plan is publicly posted and can be seen at the link where you can find it. Very good, thank you, Jennifer. Um, I'll entertain a second. Robert Deal again. Um, I, I don't see a page 12 in section 10. Okay. Oh, it's section 10.3. I mean, 10.2. 10 dash two, section 10 dash two. 10 dash two. Is that on Jeff, page 12? Uh, I don't have a page number. I don't okay. have page number either. Well, I'll just get rid of that then. And that was Robert Deal. Just, yeah, section 10-2. And Jennifer, one more thing. When when you're quoting the position paper mm -hmm. from, uh, and my screen now, I don't have your uh, your your thing in front of me, but it, it says, since there was no landfill at that time, or oh, no expansion okay. at that time, maybe we should say no proposed expansion at that time. You see in the second paragraph, as there was no expansion at that moment, the plan was written and approved. Should we say, as there was no proposed expansion at that moment, the plan was written and approved? Sure, it clarifies it. Just, it, it makes that much clearer. Yeah. Sure. So the- Sorry to do that. The two okay. changes, the, the, just the, 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 there are two tweaks to the motion. Um, 
Um, one uh, about adding the term proposed, um, about the proposed expansion at the moment the plan was written and approved. And the second one was um, uh, moving it from section 10-12 to section 10-2 in paragraph four of the, of the motion. With those um, um, changes to it, uh, I, I think it's fair to just for me to ask for a second of this motion offered by Jennifer Hackett. I second, Lisa Smith. Lisa Smith seconds it. Um, uh, we're going to, uh, just, given that we've already had plenty of conversation, I'm not gonna call for now anymore at this moment. Uh, we're gonna go to a roll call vote. Um, Sharon, are you there? I'm here. And just before I start, uh, Jennifer, if you could email this file or this this uh, these word, wording to me so we can keep it for the record. Um, yeah, all right. The Nashville Fire Department just went by. To where do you want me to email it, Sharon? Just email it to me at uh, my, uh, uh, okay. yes, thank you. And should I stop sharing now the screen? Yes, you can. Okay. All right, so we're going to take a vote. Demita Beck Taylor. And Sh Sharon, sorry, question. So the vote is to approve the motion that we just submitted, yes? Yes, yeah, the It's to approve denial. Yeah, approve. <laughs> Okay, Robert Deal. Uh, aye. Dale Grimes. Aye. Midori Lockett. Aye. Jeff McCormick. Aye. Uh, Beth Reardon. Aye. Jason Repture. Aye. John Sherman. Aye. Lisa Smith was uh, seconded. Uh, Michael Sullivan. Nay. All right, thank you. So um, uh, the the ayes have it. The, the motion to deny the application has been carried. Um, that is the final responsibility uh, for our board tonight. Um, if there is seeing no other business, um, I will, um, be, before I entertain a motion to, to adjourn the meeting, I want to first thank the public for hanging in there for over this long period um, and thank all the, our elected representatives as well. Um, this is, a, you know, we don't, uh, this is, a, we, we take this responsibility seriously and we're glad that uh, you were here to um, participate and add your comments. Um, with that, um, thank you, board, for your good and very thoughtful work. And um, now I'll, uh, I, I, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn, Robert Deal. Second, Lisa Smith. Moved and seconded. Uh, we need to do the roll call. One last yes. time, Sharon. Yes, Demita Beck-Taylor. Aye. Dale Grimes. Aye. Jennifer Hackett. Aye. Midori Lockett. Aye. Uh, Jeff McCormick. Aye. Uh, Beth Reardon. Aye. Jason Repture. Aye. John Sherman. Aye. Lisa Smith second, and Michael Sullivan. Call this number say aye. Michael Sullivan. I'm sorry. Not yet. Michael, you're muted. Well, we we have a quorum without Michael. Yeah. Um, so uh, the the eyes have it. Uh, the meeting is officially adjourned. Thank you again, everybody, and um, we will uh, we will keep you posted on our next steps with uh, with what's happening with the plan. Go Thank enjoy you. your meals. Yeah. Thank you all for your service. Your birthday drink. Oh boy! <laughs> Go enjoy your birthday. Nice Happy meeting, birthday. John. This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.